Hi, you guys. I see one person. I see one person right there. Life of an everyday goddess. Hi, you guys. That's a great name. Um, hi. Hi. Hi, surprise visit. I didn't even let anybody know. I'm just texting the girls right now when I find them. Just texting right now. How is everybody? Hi. You guys have all been so sweet. I know I took a big nap this afternoon and I think I slept through two clients. I told them that I was double booked, but I actually, I think was sound asleep. Or this morning, I can't even figure it out. <laughs> like, I don't even know what I'm doing. I get up at four, I leave, I come back and I'm like, oh, I don't understand. Let me find... Okay. I'm just doing this. All right, you guys. There we are. How is everybody? Oh, you guys are so nice. So nice. I'll tell you all. Yeah, my, well, yeah, the birthdays are interesting. <clears throat> it's been interesting since this happened. I am wearing my pajamas slash workout top slash whatever it is I run outside in. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> I'm just doing that. Um, okay, so let me just look. I've got one other thing, and I can't remember what it was, who I was texting. I texted Libra Lori. Um, let's see. Yeah, I texted Libra Lori. Um, I am back. All right, yes. Well, what are you going to do, right? You're either going to get drunk and shit-faced and cause trouble for yourself, or you're going to deal with it like a grown-up. Because we have no choice on earth. So when you have no control over something, why destroy yourself? That's what I always feel. So you really have no control. That's it. But it's not even being strong. What am I going to do about it? There's not one damn thing I can do about it, except find the person who ran Keithy off the road. I can do that. But other than that, we all die. So we all die. Yep, that's right. We literally all die. So if we die, then, I mean, I don't like the way he died, obviously, and I don't like what happened to him. But if we all die, then what is the big deal? Except that I miss my son. I miss my son, but we all die. So there you go. Mm. That's about all I can say. Um, <laughs> that's about all I can say. Um, oh, happy birthday, Virgos. I know, Virgos. Oh my God, we're having, we're having a full moon in Pisces on September 1st, which is the day I'm going to be talking to the officer investigating Keithy's case. So I will find out information about that. Um, oh, thank you. Thank you for saying a prayer. I know we cemented the cross into the ground. So that's what we're doing. We just cemented that cross there for Keithy and that's what we did. Um, yeah, it's a full moon in Virgo on September 1st. I'm not sure what time. Let me look at the time. I mean, it's a full moon in Virgo. It is a Virgo sun, full moon in Pisces. So we have that Pisces stuff coming out. Of course, Pisces is convoluted, but it's coming through in a full moon, which means on a spiritual level, more will be unlocked. Thank you for that. It's funny that I look beautiful because I literally have been asleep with my face jammed in the pillow. And I got up and I got some salmon wraps for dinner, which were delicious. Um, I got one of these. Yes, I know there's chemicals. When I was at Arlene, she's like, this has an aftertaste. I'm like, it's an aftertaste that I need right now. <laughs> so that's what I need. And I have to confess, I've been to Starbucks. Oh my God. I broke my no Starbucks. That's what I did. I didn't go through the drive-thru. I went into the store in my mask. I couldn't do the drive-thru, but I did it. Mm. That's what I did. I actually got my Starbucks and I saw my friend Les. I hadn't seen Les in a while. Um, Les is more, I'm kidding. His name is Les, L-E-S. And I haven't seen him in a while. So I talked to him. We talked in the parking lot because God forbid we go in and sit down anywhere. We can't do that. Um, we can't do that anymore. We're not allowed to. So 
Yeah, so let me find this full moon for you and tell you what time it is. It's September 1st because I have my meeting with the officer on September 1st. And I can't see when the full moon is. That's great. Full moon is at 10 degrees of Pisces, 12, is that right? 12, um, 12 seconds. Wait, we've got it on the second too. Let me see. I'm really not sure when that full moon is. Let's see. After moon conjoins Neptune or blah, 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 blah. Yeah, okay. So it's late at night because it's Pacific time. It's on the first and East Coast. It is on the second. So it's close to midnight. I don't know. I don't know what time it is at. So we have this. Yeah, I'm happy to be upright. Actually, I've been hiking. I started hiking. Um, I know I miss my Keithy. My Keithy's here. He's definitely here. He was playing with Kenna's phone earlier tonight. Kenna had her phone on and um, her phone was on and it kept typing and she wasn't on it. So she was talking, listening to something on her phone doing dishes and then her phone was typing and typing and typing so that's what she was doing um i can't really feel him strong no i don't feel look at this it's like i'm flashing you guys um i don't feel him strong necessarily and i don't dream about him but i know thank you for that um but i know he's around because in my studio so it's like all of 600 feet i'll show you guys well you can see okay so look around <laughs> this is it <laughs> this is it and there's the bathroom and there's another room right there that's very small but anyway i will be over there behind that couch and there's six boxes of pictures of keithy which he helped me bring in here he moved them in out of my storage thing out back because i had all the pictures because i was arranging them for everybody and he brought the last box in for me and I can hear him banging on it. Like, it's like, it's almost like Jason's beside me banging, like, hurry up. But there's no one here. I thought Jason was here. And then I looked, I'm like, oh, Jason's not here. So I hope, yeah, let's see. Uh, but he wouldn't come when we wanted to see him. No, he doesn't come when I want to see him either. But he does try to come through. He come through to Deanna. He came through to um, Faye. There's a few people he's come through, Kay, Deanna, and Faye. Um, so he's come through. Thank you so much. He's, he, he's come through, but I don't feel him, but I know he's here because I have such a strong sense of peace. Otherwise I'd be out of my mind looking for where he is, which brings me to an interesting topic when you're talk. Oh, first, before I get to that interesting topic, topic, um, I'm not really sure how everybody else is doing because um, when I'm around them, they act like they're okay. Uh, Jason doesn't really talk much, so we don't know. And least of all to me, because, you know, public enemy number one, he's taking over that. So I'm not, I don't really talk to Jason a lot, but um, I do talk to John. He seems fine. Tulip's distraught. Tulip's looking for, you know, Keithy. Jason just comes and goes at night and says, you know, hi or bye or whatever, but that's not unusual. And Keithy's friends are sad, of course. Um, everybody's sad. They, I mean, because he's a wonderful person. He was actually a really good person. I took Tulip to get her nails done because she's scratching the shit out of the couches. I mean, scratching the shit out of the couches. Like, she's just attacking couches like they are enemies in the house. Instead of sitting on them, she's attacking them. So I took, um, yeah, I... Uh, is it normal? Yeah, I don't, I think we all grieve differently. Anyway, just before I start that conversation, I took, I was going to say I took Keithy to the vet. I took t Tulip to the vet. I call everybody Keithy now. I'm like, oh, is Keith home? And I mean, Jason. I'm like, is John there? Is Keith there? You know, is Tulip coming down to eat? I call her Keith. So I take her to the vet. I'm like, Keith's here for his appointment, but not because it's Tulip. Anyway, her little nails got clipped she didn't really um yeah i know she's she didn't really like attack the doctor but it was in her head like she put up a slight fight and then she let him cut the nails and then well jason yeah probably jason's not okay but he doesn't talk to me anyway so understand that the dynamic is jason and i jason's not a, a you know a great talker to his mother kind of thing 
Um, men don't speak. Most men, I don't know about gay men. I'm talking about straight men. <laughs> don't get mad at me. Gay men talk. That's why us girls like gay men because they talk and they know how to do hair and nails too. But they talk, right? Straight men aren't communicative on a whole. They have a hard time unless they're talkers per se. So yeah, men don't really verbalize. They tend to drink and do drugs and stuff like that instead of dealing with grief. Um, yes. Oh God. I hope I got, oh, I think I did get the bracelet. Oh, so many of you have sent so many things. I don't even know. Some for my birthday, I, a bracelet. I'm not wearing it right now. I did get the bracelet. There was another bracelet I got. Uh, this might be the one you're talking. I don't know. This one was from Australia. This has a little koala on it. Look, so cute. And it's blue. I have it right here by my thing over here. And then somebody sent me a lovely gold bracelet with my initials on it, um, which was great. Yeah, G Jason does talk to Kenna and Lila, of course. Just, it, you know, I mean, you know, family dynamics. Um, but having said that, this is beautiful. And I'm so sorry. I've been trying to remember everybody. I have all the cards over there. And I just put them up there. And then I'm like, I'll tell everybody. But I'm thanking everybody for the wonderful cards. So many of you sent cards. So many of you reached out. So many of you did so many nice things. Actually, nicer than some family members. <laughs> Let me just say that. Um, you know, there's always like when you have a funeral, there's always one family member that you're like, um, you're like, God, did that person need to show up? Because like Jesus, right? Um, so yeah, there's always that one family member and they're always pulling their stunts at the funeral. So I find the stunts out after the fact. And it was nobody in my close circle. It wasn't John or Jason. I'm not talking about them. Um, but it was another one. And this particular person is like um, opportunistic in the worst kind of way. And it's like, wow, really? But yeah, there were so many lovely people that are not that person. So that was good. Um, thank you for that. Uh, Anyway, what I was going to say is before I even talk nonsense, yeah, there's always one at the funeral and there's always somebody bitching about the funeral. I say funeral, it was a service and we cremated Keithy and now I have to pick an urn and then I have to get Pete like this. This is like the weirdest thing. I don't know if I want the ashes around me because I'm creeped out by that. I never thought that would be, but I am. It, it, yeah, I think Tulip does see him. Yeah, there's always someone being dramatic, calling you dramatic, by the way, when you're bringing something up, right? It's like, wow, really? Anyway, um, <laughs> so I have to pick urn. Urn for me, urn for John, and urn for Jason because we're not all in the same places all the time. And so anyway, you can hold the ashes for 90 days because urns on the internet are not easily accessible. So it takes like a month to get them. I'm like... Come on now. I found these beautiful blow and gla glass ones on Etsy. It sounds very weird because I'm sure Keith does not give a shit. However, we weirdo humans do. And then I've got all the little urns. There's like 11 of them for his friends. They want tattoos. Um, some want jewelry. And some want to take the ashes on an adventure, which is what I think I'm going to do with mine. Is I'm going to take mine on an adventure and let them go in Palm Springs. Don't tell the people in Palm Springs that. But that's what I think I'm going to do. Not now. It's too freaking hot out there. I can't climb up there. Yeah, you can make diamonds and you can do all of that. But I don't know if I want them on. Do I want to tie them here? I never thought about this. And I'm like, ugh, like this. It just creeps me out. Um, yeah, you can plant it with a tree and you can hug it. Yes. But I'd have to plant it out on a hill because I got nowhere to plant it myself because I may not stay in the house. I may move. You know, it's just up in the air with that. But I want to take him and spread his ashes into the world. And then I thought about it. If there's like 14 of us with ashes, <laughs> right? If there's 14 of us with ashes, then what the fuck happens? Where does everything go? You know, Keith is over here. He's over here. He's in the ocean. He's everywhere. Um, yeah, I just don't know that I want to look at his ashes every day. Um, yeah, I don't know. I want to take him on the hike in Palm Springs. I know I love my Keithy. I was told 12 or 15 years ago by an astrologer, nobody that I'm in close contact with now, 
through a friend that did a TV show, uh, a mutual friend of ours who did TV with, but he was looking at John's, um, we used to do like once a year reading thing with him, but he was looking at John's business chart and he had my chart for money and John's chart because that's what people are asking. I never ask anything else. I just ask about business or money or sell the business or whatever. Not my business, another business. Anyway, um, he said to me, you have, you're going to, one of your children is going to die. And I said, I already had that happen, although it was my stepson, not my son out of my body. And he straight up said to me, this is 12 or 15 years ago. I never forgot it. He said, no, one of your children. Okay. One of your children. And I remember I went home and I go to John, do you think you need vodka? I need fucking vodka and I don't drink. Um, I said to John, I said, do you think he means one of our children? Because the kids were, Keithy might've been 12 and Jason like 15 and Jason was being a pain in the ass. No offense, Jason, if you're watching me, Jason, my little pain in the ass in high school. Keith was good. Keith got less attention because Keith was secretive about his being a pain in the ass. This is what they are. And Jason was like up front with, what are you going to do about it? Kind of thing. A lot, a lot like my attitude. But anyway, Timothy, the astrologer said to me, you have the death of a child. And I remember thinking he's got to be talking about Jimmy that already passed. But no, I, it always stuck in my head and I thought it would be the teenage years. I never suspected this. Never. Um, Never, 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 never suspected Keithy. Keithy was not the one. Keithy was just a nice human being. And I, so I was looking in his dash in the middle of his car today because I wanted to know where the wallet was. I needed to know how he paid because he told one of my psychic friends, Deanna, that someone took something out of his pocket. Um, something went missing from his pocket. So I went to find the wallet. There was nothing in the wallet and he kept the wallet in the car anyway and George was driving the car home. So the wallet's in there. So John is looking through the, the, the middle board of the car and we're looking to see where the credit card would be where he paid for the service on the bike, right? So <laughs> we look in there and I was so happy. I don't even have it. I don't know if I have it. Well, no, that's not it. I, I was looking for a chunk of tourmaline. He had, now I know who took my big, fat chunk of tourmaline he had it in the middle of the car just like i do in my car i have all my crystals in the middle protecting me yeah he had a huge one john pulls it out at first i thought it was weed uh i mean like a like hash right i i'm like wow that's a big rock of hash <laughs> that's what i thought no it was tourmaline um and so he had the tourmaline in there and i was like um Oh, okay, great. So that was really cute. Keithy had it. The more, I, I know, Keithy had, Keithy loved his, it, no, it wasn't hash. It was tourmaline. <laughs> I know he was like me. No one told me that. We didn't really know it because we didn't really talk about it. Um, there was a lot of, you know, stuff in our family where we didn't really talk or they didn't talk to me. It was three men, one woman. And, you know, I mean, come on. They just thought I was an idiot half the time. <laughs> you know, whatever, a girl a woman, a whatever. So I'm finding out a lot. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it was interesting. But I mean, I knew Keithy loved crystals. He always took them and hid them in his room. Lila takes them and he takes them. Um, yeah, so that was, that was interesting. Lila absconds with crystals. She comes by and she absconds. Um, he is my boy. Yeah, no, I love my Keithy. I love my kids. Wasn't the best mother. I've said it. You know, I, I was in a war with their father a lot of the time growing up. People don't like to hear it. People don't see it that way. But we fought a lot. So we were very aggressive. And those poor kids had to grow through that. And I've no, I don't know what else to say. I did apologize to Keith. Probably six months ago I did. So, you know, that's all I could do was to say, I'm sorry for being the mother that you shouldn't. No, Lila's Jason's daughter. Um, but I... I said to Keithy, I was sorry for being a bad mother to him because, you know, there were those times. It was funny when he was like 13 or 14 and, you know, he got that mouth going. <laughs> and I just remember like coming at him like this and he put his hand on my forehead and I'd be running to him and he'd just be like, stop like this. 
and I, it was something he did at school or something, you know, and I was like, that's it, that's it, I'm coming after you. So he was cute, but he did give me a big hug and he said, mom, you were a good mom. That's what he said. He was trying to make me feel better. I could have done better. And that's a lesson, you know, here's what I will tell you. This is my wisdom. I have, he was cremated, correct. I have no wisdom to tell anybody because I'm a shit ass mom and a shit, like half the shit I tell you, I live my life as I say, but there's so many mistakes. We all make mistakes, by the way. Um, we all make mistakes. But here's the thing. If you are with somebody that takes your attention from your children by fighting and arguing with you, it's not good. And you should never fight in front of your children. And, and I'm one to talk because I had to always argue back. If some, somebody said something that wasn't true, I had to make them know my point. But see, some people are too invested in not allowing you to... They're not, they're not going to forgive you. Their investment is in not hearing what you're saying. So when that's the case in a relationship, get out. It doesn't matter. My mistake was I didn't realize I didn't have to fight back, but I argued the entire, entire... Yeah, you'd say you'll die for the truth right now. Call me a whore. And if I had my Keithy alive now, I'd be fine. You can call me whatever the fuck you want. But I fought it and my kids were hostage to two adults fighting each other. And it wasn't, yes, I'm a fire sign. So is their father. But it wasn't, it, it wasn't the right thing to do. It really wasn't. It doesn't matter what another person thinks. This is what they can think. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. I wasted time focused on a grown, this, this is just my perspective right now. I really didn't need a man. Oh God, I'm going to sound terrible. I really... You need them to have children. Well, unless you steal children or you impregnate yourself with sperm from somewhere. I don't know that that's a good idea because I believe children need their father. But personally, I wouldn't waste my time again ever arguing with a partner about anything because I don't really fucking care what they think. Um, they always have something to say. And unfortunately, the way that I was raised, I wasted my time trying to get somebody to see my value as a person when they're never going to. So when you recognize that they're never going to fucking see you the way that you really are, they're invested in framing your narrative in a different way, then you're like, fuck you. I don't care. Call me whatever. Um, so that's what I say. That's the truth. That was my mistake with my Keithy. And that's what I apologize to him for. doesn't mean I don't love the other person. It doesn't mean anything like that. But you know what? My job is not to have my attention focused on you. That's like when somebody makes you defend yourself. This is what I've learned. When somebody makes you defend yourself in life, I'm not a whore. I'm not a this. I'm not whatever it is they call you. Okay. Whatever it is you are called within a marriage or relationship or partnership or friendship. Who fucking cares? Who are they? They're not there when you die. Nobody's there when you die. It's not worth my breath. I will never do it again. You can call me whatever. I don't care. I won't do it again. Won't do it again. I knew not to do it then, but you get caught up because you're in a relationship and you're like, I want this person to like me. But the whole, so weird. Anyway, at the memorial service, um, another family member, totally separate. Yeah, don't. If your boyfriend does that to you, leave. You don't need to prove yourself. You want to call me a donkey's ass? Call me a donkey's ass. I don't give a shit. I don't give a shit. I don't care. Fuck you. But when you're not making money in a relationship or you're making just enough to pay bills and they have power over your children and they're bullies, that could be another problem too, can't it? Can't it now, ladies? Never give your job up. I never gave my job up, but never give your job up. Know that. Don't do it. Mm-mm. Don't let a man have control. Don't let a man tell you that he has all the control. And because you're a psychic, they could call you crazy in jail. That didn't really happen to me. But it happened to my cousin. <laughs> it happened to my cousin, who is also psychic through marriage. And she married into the family. And they tried that on her. They tried that the fuck on her. They tried, no, bullying. I got bullied after the, I got bullied right after the funeral by a family member because they didn't like the service. They didn't like that my name was mentioned in the service. They didn't like that I had the memorial on my birthday. They didn't like anything I did. I got tortured and almost in a fist fight after that. That's what I'm gonna say. I'm not saying which family member. 
And I'm just not going to say the, the whatever. Anyway, I settled that one, but that's actually what happened. And I was like, wow, are you really saying, are you, no, it's not cool. Um, it's really not cool. That's right. And yeah, anyway, <laughs> that's what happened. And I, no, it wasn't my, it wasn't Jason. No, no, I was arguing with somebody over Jason, but no, it wasn't. And yeah, and then there's just, it's just very interesting, but I can see you and there's nothing you're going to do to me. And that's another thing, another thing to you people. Um, some people have been looking up that's very interesting. I don't understand what it's about, like who has a fucking head problem or not. And I don't care. You can research me all you want. I promise you, you're not going to find everything out about me. I think I'm actually having a hot flash now. I think I got my period again. You guys don't care about that, do you? <laughs> um, yeah, no, 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 no. There's people in my family that I, I literally almost got punched in the face after my birthday for having my birthday on, on, and then I got called a coward because I deflected the physical aggression directed at me, but I literally got in trouble. I'm serious. So here's what I'm saying to that person. They know who they are. You can fuck off. That's what you can do. And if you wonder why I did what I did, it's because you're a fucking dick. So anyway, yeah. Anyway, that's what happened. That happened. No, that's been... Anyway, I'm not even going to say who. But that's what fucking happened. And I was like, all right. first of all, this is what happened. You know Newsom, the mental patient that runs Los Angeles, the demonic, evil apparently crackhead that gets his nails and hairs done and thank you okay seriously look terry bleached my hair look at the job how good is that look at it bleached um exactly so and jana cut my hair before so bleached and cut and beautiful right oh yeah i know it's horrible um, yeah, no, this was funny. So Newsom shut down the crematoriums and, oh, Newsom, he's a mental patient, mental patient. Literally on the day, two days after Keithy dies, they shut down. Like I literally booked the crematorium. Like who wants to do this anyway? Who the fuck wants to do this? Certainly not the fuck me, <laughs> but I, so I booked the crematorium and Newsom shuts down the viewing on the crematorium. So apparently, I haven't done this, but yeah, by what authority can you shut? They, they, sh no, they literally shut it down. You can cremate, but you can't view. Like at a funeral, I guess you go to a viewing and then awake at your friend's house or the wake in the viewing. You go into the church, the casket's up there or whatever. You know, I'm not for Catholic shit. Keith was baptized Catholic because of John. Only because of John. I never stepped foot in a church other than with my little friend Janie next door growing up. Catholic ain't my thing, but I do believe in Jesus and I do believe in God. So, and I believe in the Virgin Mary and I believe in Buddha and I believe in Allah. And I believe, I just knew there was God as a child. I didn't need to be shoved into a church to have it shoved down my throat. I knew this, okay? I knew it as a small, small child. Keith knew it as a small boy, by the way, because no one ever took him to church even though I heard tales about him needing to go to church, but since it wasn't my job, I wasn't going to do it. <laughs> Why would I do it? Mm. Anyway, um, what the hell was my point? Oh, so Newsom on, Keithy died on Wednesday. On Friday, I booked the crematorium or whatever you want to call it. I have Keith being transferred from the corner to there, but the corner has to release the body. And guess what? Guess what, people? In Los Angeles... The people that work for the fucked up government, and I'm going to say this, the fucked up government, they literally take their fucking time with your loved one's dead body down in the, wherever the fuck it is, the coroner's office. Although I will say the little young coroner lady that came to where Keithy was, was very um, detached, matter of factly, but also very succinct in everything. She was about the only one. Um, and she had, couldn't have been more than 35, if that, I mean... So she must have gone through medical school and she's this little tiny cute brunette girl. Very, very cute. Um, and she was very succinct with everything and she was like, this is what's going to happen. This is what we're going to do. Here's what was on the body. Blah, blah, blah. Anyway, so after Newsom pulls his stunt, I'm trying to get the body 
signed off in the corner, which they cannot cremate till the corner or the office in LA, there's paperwork. First, I have to write paperwork. And thank God Arlene set my printer up. After Keithy passed, we all came over here. And I said, Keithy was supposed to come and set my printer up and he didn't do it. He told me to ask Jason to do it. Jason didn't want to do it. So I told Keithy, Jason doesn't want to do it. So Keithy said he'd be back. Of course, he never came back. But anyway, he said he'd be back. So Arlene did it. So if you all have computer problems, Arlene is the one <laughs> that you should be asking because she came and did it. She sat through all the stress and she totally set my printer up because I had to print stuff up. There's like literally no air coming out of here. This is so interesting. Okay, mode. Yes. Cool. Magic. Okay, anyway, so yeah, Arlene did so good. So Carol, Arlene, and Barb were sitting here. And Arlene's the one that understands technical stuff. She also understands tater tots, and <laughs> which is my new favorite food. So if you want to know what I like, I like tater tots. I never ate them before till me and Lila ate them at Arlene's. And it's really the food of the gods. Tater tots, really. Um, Arlene's husband texted me and he's like, I'll cook whatever you want. He goes, or I'll help Arlene cook it. And I'm like, tater tots is what I want. I want tater tots. It's really, truly all I want. But anyhow, so Newsom shuts down these, these viewing rooms at the crematorium. So usually you're allowed to view and... So I learned this from Marvin, one of Keithy's best friends. I learned this from Marvin, his girlfriend, Jade. She had just buried, buried, cremated her 23-year-old sister two months before Keithy passed. She's 26. Her sister was 23. So she said, I didn't know what to do with Keithy. He was in the corner, and I'm like, I want Keithy somewhere. So anyway, Jade gave me the number. So this is very good. It was called SoCal Cremations. Not that anybody wants to be there. However... They were inexpensive and effective. So I'm going to give them a shout out because they actually moved Keithy to another building so that everybody could come and view Keithy so that they would know. And it was good for Keithy's dad because they didn't, he didn't see Keithy on the road. Me and Jason did, but John was sick that day and was at home. Um, so he was not able to drive out there and we had just gone straight, you know, we had just gone, gone that. Um, exactly 28 is a good age that's that's my jason's age um so anyway we did that so everybody got to see keithy who needed to see him and by the way you know like whatever so then we had the service in the park which i already told you about that was very nice and that was good but my concern <laughs> my concern with this world am i blurred again I'm probably blurred again. Um, my concern on this world is that these fucking people that run our government, I mean, you think I'm going to stop talking? I'm not going to stop talking about pedophiles, the movie industry, the Satanism that goes in. I'm not going to. I'm now going to go at it full force. That's what I'm going to do. You want to come after me? Come after me. You want to come after the rest of us? Come after us. It's already happened. I know it, people are weird. They're like, you know, you should stop talking because there's no, I'm going to keep talking. I'm going to keep talking. I'm going to keep talking and louder. That's right, fuckers. I don't care if I die because we all die, dumbasses. Like it's, they're like, oh, this, this is what I find interesting. This is the other thing I know that's so interesting as well is that a lot of people I talk to, of course, I'm very sad. I can't believe Keith's gone. He was 24 beautiful kid, lovely person. I'm sure he's pretty irritated that I'm around all his friends. Ah, oh, I could just see him. He's like, oh my God, my mom's asking questions of this one and that one and you know, like this. So I, I find that ironic. He's probably rolling his eyes like, oh my God, my mom's talking to that one, you know, like that. But which is a little joke because Keith had a Scorpio moon and it was conjunct Pluto, out of sign conjunction well, it wasn't really conjunct. It was same house. Pluto was at one degrees of Sag and his moon was 16 Scorpio all in the fourth house. So he, um, oh God. Anyway. Oh, hold on. I have to email somebody. Um, hmm. 
sorry, I'm here. Um, I will check. Um, I, sorry, I'm doing this. I will check. Somebody ordered crystals and I didn't send. Um, so I've been delayed. Okay. Um, tell me. I'm sure I sent them then, but who knows if I really did. Um, oh, shoot. Hold on here. Please tell. I'm just stopping in the middle to text someone. <laughs> uh, okay, so I've got this like weird thing where I have to answer people. But yeah, I'm not going to stop talking. And here's the thing. Um, when you're a warrior in life at whatever you are, and Keith was a warrior. Keith spoke about the same things that I spoke about. Keith understood the world the same way. You put yourself at risk. We all put ourselves at risk if we get up in the morning and go out. So the only thing I can say is Keith, um, wait, can we see a picture? Of course you can see a picture of Keithy. Oh, thank you for that. Thank you so much, you guys, for everything. You're really kind with that. Um, very kind. Um, what I was going to say is you put yourself at risk when you get up in the morning. You put yourself at risk doing anything that you do and Keith. Oh, see, your daughter's December 18th. Keithy was December 18th. Um, you put yourself at risk at ev everything that you do in life. And Keith was doing exactly what he loved. So for that reason, if I died hiking, then I'm okay with it. I don't necessarily want to get eaten by a bear, but if I died hiking, fell off a ledge, whatever, I'm okay with it because I'm doing what I love. But if I'm sitting in my house afraid wearing a mask like an asshole sorry for people that wear masks but if i'm doing that i mean you know i'm afraid of dying of something that's like zero 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 point four percent and it's the flu i'm sorry i'm sorry i can't i can't get a grip people get a grip and you know what i found so interesting there's some fuckers on my facebook some fuckers on my facebook that i know in my real life like i've known them for years they will argue about a mask. They will argue about a mask and never once said, I'm sorry about your son, whom, by the way, they knew through his childhood. That's what kind of fucking idiots they are. Fucking idiots. I'm sorry. I, I absolutely am like, you are a fucking idiot. You call yourself religious. You are an abomination as a human being. Because you can't even say, I'm sorry your son passed, but you want to argue about the mask? Okay, okay, all right, bitch, bring it on. Um, yeah, exactly. So that's what's happened. I'm really seeing who people are. Yeah, no, people are dumb. And you know what's going to happen? They're probably going to die of something. Like they, they talk about, I know somebody who went on a ventilator. I know somebody who got sick. Well, I know somebody who was riding a motorcycle and got run off the road and died. And by the way, that was my son. So that actually happened. The, per the person you're talking about, you're telling me recovered from whatever happened to them. So I don't care. Like, I mean, I'm sorry, but what? Like they recovered. They're breathing on the planet Earth and walking around and their family sees them. And you yeah, it's whatever. It's so stupid. I can't even say it. Oh yeah. No, such bad form. And what I, what I can just say, let's see, says he almost run over by two trucks. Yeah. Well, that's what they do. They do that shit. However, it doesn't mean that's what happened to Keith. I have to dig it. I'm trying to stay very neutral. Um, very neutral. Well, I'm waiting to see Keith's death certificate, whether they put motorcycle accident or, you know, um, cabal 19 i'm gonna call it now the cabal disease what the hell right anyway on a um let's see i'll let you finish your podcast and i'll text you <laughs> they're they're looking at me on the podcast thank you i had to answer when i see my phone ring now i have this like ocd where i have to answer it oh you wanted to see pictures of keithy okay so let's let's show you pictures of little keithy um these are so cute this one <laughs> This is, <laughs> this is probably like a year or so ago, but this is Keithy. This was so cute. He looks like the little boy in seventh grade, but it's like, he's real tall and thin and we dress the same. I was like, I could see myself wearing this, <laughs> my little Keithy. Um, he was so cute, just really cute. I'm not supposed to show this one, but this one was Keithy. This, how cute is this? Look, look at cute Keithy. 
See him? Look at that. Isn't that cute? Yeah, he tried to eat well. He tried to do things well. He was very empathic. I know. My Keithy was super cute. Six foot four. Very cute. Um, very, very cute little boy. And actually a nice person. There were times when he made me feel better when really, and times when he was like 10, 10, 10 or 12 sitting in the car with me and he would say something, I'd be like, you little adult. <laughs> um, it was so cute. Thank you for that. Yeah, he was 6'4". He was too tall for that bike. Like, he was super tall. Like his friend Jordan. I should, Did I show you those pictures? Anyway, his friend Jordan and him, they always had this thing who was taller. So now when I see Jordan, I'm like, I'm taller, even though clearly I'm not taller. But this, this was... This was Keithy and Jordan. I love showing this picture. Look, these two, these two six foot four boys. Same build, same everything, these two little guys. Um, yeah, let's see. I'll show you the rest of that picture. It's it's a very cute picture. Um, Keithy's friends are the best. All of his friends. Oh, my God. Yeah, Keith was very, very handsome. He didn't think he was. Um, that's because of our society. Our society, we judge so much and... Sometimes when people are attractive, people don't like it, so they frown at them. I don't know how you women feel, but women, women especially women, I don't know what it's like in the man world, but women got, oh, <laughs> no, he can be a naughty boy. Um, but anyway, there's Jordan and Keith on their bikes. That's Keithy standing up. They drive up where I hike, like I've been hiking in the mountains off of that ridge. Um, and what sign is Jordan? Jordan's a Gemini and Keithy was a Sag. Yeah, Jordan's a cute little Gemini and Keithy was a Sag. But all of Keithy's friends were so, like, so, so, so lovely. I have all these boards back here and I'm making, we're, we're photocopying them. But I put this, thank you guys for that. Um, we put them up there, but Tia... And Allie and Andrew. Okay, so Andrew and Tia are brother and sister. And Allie is Andrew's girlfriend. And they did all of these arrangements and the pictures of Keithy and the boards. And so I've got like five or six of them. And so I'm making copies so Jason can have. Yeah, Keith was the baby and the taller one, definitely. Um, so, oh, geez, I'm sorry about your friend. Yeah, horrible weekend. Um horrible horrible week it was the full moon in aquarius and it was fucked up fucked up um anyway tia did these lovely arrangements with Allie and andrew and they came and they helped me every time put the signs up all over chatsworth so they did that anytime i need anything they made john um tia made john Allie went shopping and tia made john um oh my god what is it called like beef stew no pot roast that's it things i don't cook <laughs> because you will all go on a diet with me because <laughs> no i don't know if they say he if they dare say he, i don't know if they say that i'm waiting to find out but anyway um they made keith is and keith they made john this wonderful like pot roast for john and he loved it it smelled really good if i ate meat i would have eaten it but i don't eat meat so i eat salmon and chicken but not that not red meat Anyway, they did that. They've taken Jason under their wing. Um, Jordan and Jason went for a bike ride. Uh, Jason, some whatever, but he, we worry about him a little bit on that bike. Uh, yeah, so sweet. Okay, I didn't even read that. Sorry, my eyes are blurring. But anyway, there was another point I was going to say. Okay, so on Saturday, this is a really fun thing. On sa Okay, I was always saying to Keith, Keithy. You and Marvin, because Marvin is a fighter, okay? So Marvin is like a MMA fighter, and he places, and he ranks in fighting. So Jay, um, Keithy and Marvin were going to go to Thailand, and Keith was going to do his fighting so he could start doing MMA. And he had the same reach. I love saying this. Keith's body had the same arm reach as Muhammad Ali. Like, Keith was a Leo rising, his, my son was on his ascendant, 21 degrees Leo rising, and his reach and body was the same, like the reach. So Keithy was going to do his fighting, and he was training. So you got to really up your cardio. Marvin's really good at running up hills and cardio. So I said to Keith, when you're, when you're ready, 
let's do Palm Springs. Thank you for that. Thank you, you guys. I said, let's do that for Palm Springs. Let's literally do Cactus to Clouds, you guys. So Keithy said he would. Secretly, Keithy would go run the mountains behind my back, not tell me, wouldn't go with me. Secretly, he was afraid I'd beat him. That's right. That's what I said. I'd beat the 24-year-old. Thank you for that. Um, so I know pot roast. I wish I'd have eaten it. Thank you guys. Oh my God. You guys are so nice. Thank you. Um, so I was going to take, because Palm Springs is 130. Let's face it. You will die. If you climb up in the middle right now, you'll fucking die out there. So I said, as soon as it hits end of October, November, let's me, Marvin and Keithy go to Palm Springs and do cactus to clouds. We'll meet David and Rolo. Maya's, Maya's back in Los Angeles. Vanessa wants to do it for the first time. So I said, David can push the boys. And then me and Vanessa, right, we'll, we'll go behind. And Maya, and we'll, uh, it'll be super fun. They'll beat us to the top. It'll be fun. Okay, so Keithy's not here now. So I dragged, um, I dragged <laughs> Marvin hiking on Mount Baldy with me. And so Vanessa, Vanessa hasn't been doing the altitude hikes since Keithy passed. She's just been doing local. So we were all out of shape, okay? All of us were out of shape. Not Marvin, because at the end, the last 700 feet, Marvin ran up. Some runner went by. I go, Marvin, go, go, go. Thank you for that, you guys. Oh, thank you for that. Um, so Marvin went back. I mean, he beat the guy to the top, but he did really good. His hands swelled a bit. That's a, you know, I wanted to see how the altitude would hit him. So we went up to 10,000 10,064 feet, Mount Baldy. It's like my almost 90th climb up there, um, you know, for that reason. But anyway, we did it and Marvin did really good. So he will be ready with Vanessa, me, David, Rolo, and Maya. She's still in the Navy, but we're going to pull her out. She will be ready. He will be ready to do that. Let's find the picture. I haven't posted the pictures of Marvin yet. Because I have to sit down and do it. I get so like ridiculously lazy at times. But let's let's see this. Okay, so here's Marvin. He's like, oh my God, now I'm hiking with Keith's mom. I've known this kid since he was five. There's Vanessa, me, and Marvin. Um, yeah, so I've known Marvin since he was this big. This little tiny Marvin. Yeah, so cute. Anyway, he's pretty good athlete. He's a pretty good athlete, and um, so I think he can do all the peaks. Keithy had, does anyone know? Yeah, Keithy was a Scorpio moon. Keithy was a Scorpio moon, and he was, uh, his rising is Leo. Keithy was Leo rising. Muhammad Ali was Leo rising, and Keithy's a Sag, so Keithy had the Sag body, and he had the Leo look, and they had the, I just told him how nice and gold his hair looked. I'll miss that kid so much. Um, yeah, he was secretive for sure. For sure. Yeah, we're going to definitely, um, I love to hike. So Keithy would want me to hike, but I'm going to take Marvin to Palm Springs and Jade, who hasn't trained yet, his girlfriend hasn't trained yet to climb up the mountains, but she is gonna, but she'll stay in the spa with the other ladies that want to stay in the spa. She can do that and we can come back. So we can actually go the day before, sleep overnight, and then go up early at like two or three in the morning because you have to because of the heat. So that's what we're going to do. Anyway, uh, oh, August 26th, happy birthday. Oh, yeah, there's hope. It's good. You're a Virgo, though. So you have that full moon in Pisces, so it's going to be in opposition to your sun. So there, there's going to be that. But, yeah, so thank you for that. Thank you. Thank you, guys. You guys are so great. Um, Yes, we're still investigating the accident. I don't talk to the officer till uh, September 1st. He's on some kind of training this week. So this officer, this new officer investigator has been very good in every time I email, he responds. He tells me what he's done. He's pulled the tape from here. He's done this from here. He's done that. He's done this. So he's very responsive and I'm very appreciative. He doesn't make up stories. He actually is just doing his job and that is super great. That is good. So that's like a plus, right? Um, yeah, everything's going to be intense. We have six planets in retrograde. I just pulled this out for you guys. We have like six planets in retrograde. Let me find them. I pretty much know them, but this has been the worst year of my life, obviously. 
Well, actually, no, it's so interesting. When I gave birth to Keithy, after when his brother died, that was probably the worst 13 years of my life. So Keithy's first 13 years, I was a mental patient. And then 24 years to the year that his brother died, my Keithy dies. So that's just not, you know, whatever. Um, so we have, okay, the nodes are retrograde in Gemini. We have Jupiter retrograde, Saturn. We have Uranus. What is this? Oh, Uranus is already retrograde. Yeah, that went retrograde on my birthday. We have Neptune. We have Pluto. We have, oh God, Ceres. We have Pallas and we have Chiron. Everything's fucking retrograde. It's all fucking retrograde. And next month we have Mars going retrograde, okay? Mars retrograde in Aries. I believe it's going in Aries. Let's see. What is it? Yes, it's going to be in Aries. I'm warning you now. I'm warning you. Retrograde brings to light what has been hidden. So retrograde opens the door up for you to be able to see things. So Mars retrograde, if you're going to be doing elective surgery, don't be doing it while Mars is retrograde. Okay. Oh, someone called me auntie. I am an auntie. It cracks me up. They always call me, Sean and Aaron call me, cousin Sean and Aaron always call me Auntie Sloan. And I'm like, who are they talking about? <laughs> I'm like, I'm an auntie. Um, like what? Um, and because I just, you know, they're just my cousins, but I guess I'm their aunt technically because I'm married to their dad's cousin. <laughs> so that would mean I'm an aunt. Um, yeah, so it's kind of funny. But yeah, the the... Mars retrograde, don't be doing any elective surgeries. Don't be doing anything like that. When Mars is retrograde, you don't want to go in. Um, oh, <laughs> hot Auntie Sloan. Okay, that's hilarious. Um, yeah, I'm not going to do that with any kids, but yeah. <laughs> ah, um, exactly. So the Mars retrograde, remember this. Anybody going for like any kind of cosmetic surgery, you know, elective surgery, like I want to fix this or fix that. Yeah, I got totally burnt um, because I've been out walking that stupid street. Oh, no, you can get pregnant then. Of course, you may, you may get pregnant then and that's okay. Um, you may. Thank you so much for that. Thank you. Um, you may get pregnant on a Mars retrograde. That's not a problem because by the time you have the baby, Mars goes direct. I think it's around the 23rd of November or maybe it's like the 16th. Of November but going into the last weeks of November Mars goes direct but in its wake remember that Mars retrograde we're kind of fucked I mean like on September 9th get ready for some major fuckery fuckery okay so here's some fuckery that I saw and that's what I'm gonna call it I'm gonna say this again I'm gonna say it again and again people are mind fucking mental terrorism is out there I got Keithy's smile this is Keithy's smile so we've got people that can do their nails on the sidewalks, right? You can do your nails on the sidewalks. So that's okay. But apparently you can't cut your hair on the sidewalk. Why would that be? Is it because hairdressers stand closer? Really? Really? Um, you can eat your dinner on the sidewalk. Eat your dinner on the sidewalk. But you can't eat it inside. But if you do go inside, you can take your mask off if you're behind the plastic which isn't stopping anything because the germ can crawl up up in the air and go over the fucking plastic. Just letting you know, germs like to pole vault over things. And I'm going to say this again, just like I said to two guys in the parking lot, Les and his new friend who probably thinks I'm mentally ill this morning at 5.30 in the morning. Um, <laughs> I said, you guys will go into a public bathroom and have sex with a strange girl just to get a piece of ass and not worry about herpes. Half the world has herpes. But 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, blah, 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 0.4% get this and they don't all fucking die from it. But y'all got your panties in a twist. Your panties are in a fucking twist. A twist. And then, oh, and this is another thing I noticed. Yeah. So for the relatives in my family who said they want to talk to me about my son, but then send me Biden stuff about voting for Biden? I don't think so. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't fucking care. He's mentally ill. He has dementia. 
people need to take <laughs> that guy into protective custody. His family is fucking with him. <laughs> He's mental. For God's sakes, I give up. I don't care. Um, exactly. <laughs> oh my God, please. I, I No, none of them are sane. Do you see what we're doing? We are actually being forced. I don't watch TV and I don't care. And if you're going to vote, you're a dumbass. That's all I'm going to say. And I'm entitled to my opinion. Elder abuse for him, right? Elder abuse, exactly. People can shove their opinions, especially in the entertainment industry, down my throat. They can tell people I'm fucking crazy and they don't believe what I say. And they can tell people that other people that they know need to unfriend me. These fucking people in the entertainment business. But I'm not allowed to have my opinion. That's what I think of that. I'm going to have my opinion. And my opinion is just that. It is my fucking opinion. You are entitled to yours. And if mine goes against yours, that's too fucking bad for your pussy ass. That's too bad for your ass. Good God. I can't take it. I really can't. I'm going to say what I want to say. Thank you for that. The way I want to say it for the rest of my life. Because why? I'm not playing little petty games in politics with people anymore. I'm just not. I'm voting for me. I'm voting for me too. There you go. I'm going to run the country. How about that? It's like a game. It's like, okay, right against left here. Hit the football. What is this? I mean, please, people, pay attention to what's going on. Pay attention. I'm not voting for any of them. I don't believe that our system should be. First of all, we are in a really weird time where people are actually, actually, literally unfriending me on Instagram and Facebook and fuck you on Twitter, all right? They're doing all of this because I bring up the abuse and the sexual abuse of children by people in power. That is something that is really going on. Let me tell you a story. Back in the day, 33 years ago when, no, wait, 29 years ago, pardon me. I'll go to 29 years ago when I worked for a shelter in Los Angeles. I worked for this woman in a shelter. I'm not saying the name of the shelter because I found out nefarious things that she's been doing. But anyway, this particular woman, and I'm going back 29 years ago. I think I was pregnant with Jason. We had a list back then of celebrities that picked up minor children for sex. We had a roster. I'm not just saying that now. I'm not going after anybody now. I'm telling you 29 years ago when I was pregnant. He's 28, so it has to be 29 years ago. I was pregnant with Jason when I was, no, Lori Burns is the best. Lori Burns, I'm talking about Lori did not have a shelter 29 years ago. No, Vera Sanctuary and Freehab are the two I endorse at this moment. Lori is the best. I'm talking about somebody else. Um, she's a pioneer actually, but whatever. When I went out against Jeffrey Epstein and the satanic stuff on the island, she basically sent a cease, Eddie, DeMur Eddie Murphy, definitely. She sent a cease and desist on me from saying I worked with her, which you can't do because I did fucking work for her, <laughs> but you can't, but I'm not giving her credit for anything at this point right now after she did that. It's ridiculous. Um, and I can say what I want, but she was losing funding from people. So she had to shut me up. So again, bite me, bite me. Um, having, I need vodka, yes. But having said that, I actually had people comment on, so let's say you find a celebrity in the media, pick one, pick one from any television show and they tweet something pedophilic. Why would my friends get mad at me for posting that? Why would you get mad at me? I didn't write the tweet. You should ask yourself why you know somebody or are enthralled with somebody who writes a fucking pedophilic tweet. You're the fucking reason children are abused because you want your celebrity crush to keep being a celebrity crush, but they're writing pedophilic tweets. Maybe you're the problem because you refuse to see it. 
Oh, look who's calling. See this? <laughs> We're going to put him. I'll text him. I'll text him that I'm YouTubing. But these people, um, these people, I'll tell him after YouTube. Okay, so these people, okay, who got mad at me and talked behind my fucking back to everybody, and there's multiple people, these fucking people, when you go through your little star magazine or uh, you want to see them on TV or, oh, they're your best friends because you think you know them because you follow them. And I'm, yeah, Chrissy Teigen being one of them. If you're going to post publicly that on your platform, somebody like me is going to come out and say, do you not see fans of Chrissy Teigen, what she Twittered or tweeted or whatever it is. I don't Twitter or tweet. But what she did, coming from her account, it's not like I wrote it and pretended that she did it. This girl did it. Now, I do know people that know her personally, and I was actually up to go on her show, okay? And I was told that I would really like her by actually somebody who I know who works with her for many years and said she's not like that. Where I draw the line, where I draw the line is if you tweet that. If you tweet that, if you tweet that, you are tweeting harmful things, whether you're mental, you're drunk, you're high, you didn't mean to tweet that, you didn't mean to tweet it, whatever it is you're doing that you didn't mean to tweet, you still aimed violence and aggression and sexual abuse at children and people are liking your comments and those same people that think that you're their friends i actually do know somebody though and she did stick up for a friend and i respect her for that because she doesn't know that side of her and didn't understand the tweets and has never witnessed that so that particular person i absolutely respect she is entitled to her opinion from knowing that CT personally. But you people who don't know, or not you people here, but the people that were chastising me, I'm not fucking crazy. Read the tweet. Fucking read the tweet. You don't like the tweet? Go fuck yourself. I didn't make the tweet. I didn't do the tweet. I didn't do the tweet. She did it. So what is the problem with our society that we think these people that have been pushed into, I've been getting it all over. I literally have been getting it all over. No, the tweets are not false. That's not true. The tweets are not false. They've literally been there. People have been screenshotting them. And sure as hell, the tweets are not false from, let's see, had a lot of tweets. Yeah, she did. She had more than one. They're not false. Those have been on her page and they've been tweeted on a timeline. They're from like 2011, 2016. I guess I could keep a 2% opening for the fact that they may be false. But when I see that on your page, you're never going to see that on my page. It's not a joke. Sarah Silverman's joke's not a joke. The guy from The Office, Rain Wilson, fucking not a joke. Um, what's his name? Pat Oswald, not a joke. Not a fucking joke. Sorry. Kids are abused every day. And if you don't stand up for children, but you're going to come at me because some celebrity said some shitty thing that puts children in harm's way, you are the problem. Hear me clearly. You are the problem. I'm not the problem. And if you want to come at me because you think I'm a fucking problem, bring it on. Because personally, I don't care if I die. So you can come at me. I'm straight up challenging you. Come at me, bitches. I don't care. I would be happy to leave this planet now. You know why? Number one, I'd be with Keith. Number two, I'd be back home where I am. Number three, again, we all fucking die. If we all die, then what's the problem? What is everybody who pretends to be religious and believe in God and everything? What, what are you afraid of? The manner of death might be fearful. Like if somebody kidnaps you and tortures you, could be very fearful, obviously. Um, thank you for that. Thank you so much, you guys. All of that could be a problem, but once you're out of your body, you're with God and you are with home. That's my belief. So I could be proven wrong, but every single person on this planet is going to die. So what is the fear of it? But you know, who's afraid of dying people that have sold out. That's who doesn't believe in God. 
People who do shitty things and wonder where they're going to go when they leave their body. Those people are fucking afraid of dying, okay? Because they are cowards and they do shit and they do awful things to children and they sell out. So you think you're going to sell out and you think that Satan is like good. You should like be a Luciferian. You will find out when you die because you have been captured. I am under the umbrella of God. I will pray harder now and pray more. I will pray for my son and you can never stop that. Paula Poundstone's another one. Pee Wee Herman. Look at Pee Wee Herman. That guy lost everything and he was like actually in a theater just jacking off. I mean, not that I want to go into the theater or sit on the seats. Did they close down society though because of these sex theaters that are disgust? Ugh, disgusting. <laughs> No, no, they didn't. They did not do that, okay? No, they did not do that. So if they don't do that, if they don't shut it down for that, uh, right, like, right? <laughs> it's disgusting. If they don't fucking shut it down for that, we're all gonna catch a fake whatever flu. And I'm gonna say this. I was at several events since Keith died around... At least four people that had fevers, were sick, probably had the flu. Nobody got sick. Got it? Nobody got sick. If they did get sick, it was for a couple of days, three, four, five days. I'm not wearing a mask. I'm not doing it. I can't do it. I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it outside. I'm not doing it outside. I will do it. If you ask me to wear one in your house, I'm not coming to visit you. Thank God nobody I know is that way. Um, if I have to go in a store, I guess I have to, but I don't want to. And I think we should fight back now because this is going on December. So this is six, seven, eight months. So I guess we have to wait till November. So on voting day, does the virus disappear or what happens? Okay. So, you know, I don't know. Um, if you die from a virus, maybe your body is broken and maybe it's your time out. Just like if you die in a motorcycle accident or a car accident, maybe it's just your fucking time. We are not guaranteed time on this earth, okay? So to be fearful, fearful and not live is bizarre. Keith lived his life open up until the day he died, period. He lived his life free and open. Okay, when he felt like he was sick, he stayed home. When he was perfectly fine with a good immune system, out he went. That's what he did. Okay, that's what he did. So, and I actually talked to a few people that said, well, you know, like I said, maybe for the next two years, the face covering is going to be a thing. And people were like, well, if it makes other people feel comfortable, I'm not fucking here to make you feel comfortable. I'm not here to make you feel comfortable. I'm not here to do anything but be at least as courteous within my personal space. Other than that, if you want me to wear a burqa, I'm the right, you know, I'm the wrong girl. I'm not doing it. If you want me to have long hair because you think it's feminine, I'm not doing that either. I'm going to continue to shave the back of my head and keep it short because that's what I want to do. Um, if I'm supposed to dress like a 50 year old in a smock or some shit, I'm not doing that either. Um, if, or whatever, if I'm not supposed to wear makeup because you think I'm too old, fuck you. I don't care what it is. I'm not doing these things. I'm not doing them. I'm not. If you don't like my nails, I don't care. Some weirdo on here. So the last video where I'm talking about my son passing, somebody's like, oh, please, somebody, somebody tell her about her lip liner. Really? Really? You have to be somebody in my family. You have to be some fucking asshole in my family because you bitches would be the only ones saying shit like that. Family or friend. Has to be somebody I know saying that bullshit. Really, I know. So you know what I said? I wrote them. I blocked them. Yeah, they're talking about my lip liner. I blocked them. And by the way, I like the way I line my lips bigger and messy because I like that. That's what I like. I like it. I don't want to look like you want me to look. I never did. That's why I have nose piercings. That's why I have all these piercings. And that's why I shave my hair because I do what I want to fucking do. But let's get back to this. What I learned, um, I know. Yeah, no, I, I, yeah, no, family, it has to be either a friend or a family. Who is going to say that? Who is really going to say that? 
has to be somebody you know, right? Because they're the most vicious, don't you think? Um, and it has to be a woman. Doubt it's going to be a man. Because <laughs> I don't think a man cares. Sometimes it's Joe Biden. It could be Joe Biden. <laughs> he has dementia. Um, yeah, family's the worst, isn't it? Uh, and they're not even really my family. I'm talking family through marriage. And there's, you know, just some ridiculousness. Um, but anyway, what I was going to say, another thing I was going to say, a lot of what people think, if we are truly spiritual warriors and we are truly spiritual people who are concerned for others, think of Nazi Germany in the turn of the century, or turn of the century, in the 19, late 30s and 40s. Think of them and think of the people that spoke out Think of the people that spoke out, even though they could die, all throughout history, all throughout the Bible. I haven't read the Bible, but I'm told. All throughout all religious literature, people stand, people stand up, even if they put themselves in harm's way. Don't be afraid to speak up and lose friends. It is hurtful when people say stupid shit to you, like, you know, oh, you know, I think Sloane's crazy because she says this. Well, I think you're a fucking asshole because you don't stick up for abused children is what I think. I think if you stick up for a celebrity because you don't like what I'm saying, okay, over the fact that children are being abused, I think you have the fucking problem. I think, yeah, I, well, I feel like I'm honest, but I think, I think you have the problem. You have the problem, not me. I'm fine. You don't like me because you don't like who I am or whatever. Fine. But don't tell me, don't, don't ever tell me to not speak up. And if I come after a celebrity you like, and by the way, this goes for any person in my family or friend circle or anybody that I personally know. If you abuse children, I will out you. I don't care who you are. You could be my own flesh and blood. You could be my husband. You could be my mother. You could be my father. You could be the neighbor. You could be my best friend. I will come after you. How about that? How about that? That's what I will do. Um, and that's what I'm saying. I will continue to do it throughout my entire life. Because when you let a child or actually an animal be abused, you are the problem on earth. You are the reason. Your greed and your need for success and power and appearances is your problem. I am going to say it. If I see it, if I hear it, if I feel it, I'm going to speak it. And I will say it. That's what I will say. I will say it. That's right. Ask people in my family. They know. Because I've outed them, certain people. I say it every time. Some of them don't come around me because I'm going to say, Hi, welcome, meet so-and-so, they do this. That's right. Mm -hmm. I know I'm not supposed to be this antagonistic at this point, but I really don't like it. And at this point, since I got nothing to lose, like, what are you going to do to me? What are you going to say to me? You're not going to stop me from doing anything. So deal. Nobody in my immediate family, let me just put it that way. It's extended out family. Okay. Nobody that I mention on here. We're not talking about anybody that I mentioned on, on my YouTube channel, but there are people I know way, way, way. But I, I can't understand it. I don't understand it. I really don't understand it. I don't, what I'm going to do from now on, not that I haven't done it my whole life, but if you are a person on my Facebook or Instagram and you have not supported me in Keith's passing, but you want to mention that I shouldn't go against masks, I basically am going to send energy back to you that's going to make you bang your head against the wall 500 times. If you are a person that I know that chastises me for mentioning celebrities and the tweets that they themselves post that are disgusting and despicable, and especially if you have children and you can't fucking see that, and it's not a joke and you can't see that, then you don't need to be my fucking friend because there's something seriously fucking wrong with you. Seriously fucking wrong with you. Um, <laughs> there's something seriously wrong with you. If you are somebody that supports anything that compromises or bullies another person, I am going to come after you. If you are the person that ran Keith off the road, whether you forgot what you were doing, 
you were talking on your phone, you did it on purpose for an insurance scam, you fucking bullied him from behind on your motorbike, whatever your fucking problem is, I'm going to find you. That's what I'm going to do. And when I find you, you will first answer to me, then you will answer to your God. And I guess the police are going to be somewhere in there, but I'm going to find you. Um, so whatever the reason is that you didn't stop to check on my son, even if it's an accident, you are going to be held accountable. And that is what I'm going to say. Um, because whether you meant to do it or you were drunk on your lunch hour or you don't understand road rules or you didn't fucking look out your window or you were on texting on your fucking phone, I will find you because I've asked God to give me the information. And what I was told, and this also comes through Deanna right now, because Deanna is somebody that I trust and Deanna is somebody who actually... She's an amazing psychic and channel. Anyway, certain information has to be released in its time so that other information, because understand, and this is something I want to explain to you. When you wonder, because I wondered, my heart broke after, because I don't know what happened to Keith. It's one thing if like, you know, he was cutting a tree down and the tree fell on him, then I would know, oh, he was at work, the tree fell and whatever. But this is different, okay? He was definitely run off the road. Definitely run off the road. Um, the first officer wanted to make up lies, which the next day, the other, for whatever his reason is, maybe, oh, there's Jana. I just had um, dinner pizza with your birthday girl daughter. Oh, my God. Before I go on a rant about the police, let me talk about that. So anyway, all the girls went to do their, their protection stuff on the weekend. I'm not going to say what that is, but I went hiking with Marvin and Vanessa and we did Mount Baldy and we did it really good. So Estelle, Estelle as Carol calls her, that was a typo. But anyway, Estelle, whose birthday was on Sunday, I think, after I saw her on Saturday, we all had yummy pizza. So I was so worried I would be late getting to Arlene's after hiking, I figured they'd already be there, right? So I met this new friend of Arlene's, a neighbor. I really like her. Oh my God, funny as shit, okay? Funny, funny, beautiful girl. I don't know if she wants me to mention her name on my YouTube. Beautiful girl, totally funny, great fun. Um, and then Carol was there and Estelle was there and Susie was there and Arlene was there and Bill was there and Liz was there. But I went up after. So I went hiking with Marvin and um, Vanessa, and it was really fun. I miss Vanessa so much um, because she was waiting for me. You know, we saw each other, right? Okay, so this is what happens at Arlene's house. Number one, they have tater tots. So that's fucking great. Then there's like this dough. And so I got there early and Bill let me in. And I'm like, oh, they're not here. I'm going to go run run errands. So Bill had 10 doughs out there, you know, like pizza dough, doughs. So plates of 10 different doughs. And then I know tater tots, tater tots. I'm like, where's the tater tots? Anyway, the doughs were out there. So then there was like onions and okay, purple onions in a bowl, bacon. I'm not a fan of the bacon, but apparently the bacon was good. Um, there was peppers, there was mushrooms, yummy cheese. Um, what else was there? Oh, basil. Okay. Tomato sauce, all of that. So you take your dough and you, and they spread it out. I think Susie was doing the dough spreading. I'm not sure, but I think that's what she was doing. I think it was Susie. So then you take everything and you put it on there and you put the cheese all over it. And then Bill would go outside and he would put it in the special oven. It's a pizza oven. <laughs> and then he would cook it and it was life changing, truly. That was life changing. I ate a whole pizza. Estelle ate a whole pizza. We all ate, oh, Walter was there too. Anyway, we all ate a whole pizza. Inside joke, Peggy wasn't there, but <laughs> we all ate this whole pizza. Then Carol brought out a lemon cake because there were one, two, three, four Leos in the room. Four, four Leos, that's right. So then we ate lemon cake. 
I never ate so much. I know I so wanted cake. I want more cake right now and more pizza. But if I go near their house, you know what's going to happen. That's going to happen. So we ate that and we had such fun. Estelle was there. Oh God, where is that shirt? Oh my God, she got me this great shirt. Such a great shirt and I don't have it here. I'm going to bring it the next time I come on. I have it over there, but I'm not leaving the thing. Anyway, it was so much fun. And those girls, all my friends, I have the most supportive friends. And even Keithy's, um, Keithy's friends, moms, so supportive. That's a shout out to Cindy and Kelly and Kim, which would be Lucas and Austin and Jordan's moms, all of them. So very, very supportive. So very supportive. Um, my friends are amazing. Amazing. Like just amazing. Yes. And Jana, it was Estelle's birthday, as you know, and we laughed our asses off. And Estelle said the nicest thing. I hope I can repeat this here, but I'm gonna, because it really touched my heart. So Estelle came to Keithy's memorial. I don't need a service. I'm going to say in the park. So it was very free, free, free and open. And and very authentic, which is the word that I like that Estelle used. And she said that she was able to feel her dad there. And it was really interesting because she felt like they had kind of a kindred spirit together. So that was such a nice thing to say. Um, such a nice thing. Oh, people are supporting me. All you guys support me. So beautiful. But anyway, I was really glad because when Estelle's dad passed, she didn't really feel him. And she said she felt him come through. Happy birthday for tomorrow, Virgo. Virgo birthday. Um, so she said that. And I was, you know, I was touched by that because for Keith, it was literally at the place that he loved and his crystals were there. And Estelle gave me one of her dad's crystals after he passed. So it was really, really nice. Um, yeah, my friends are really lovely. Like they check on me. They have nonsensical conversations with me all day, all day. People talk to me and they listen to me say the dumbest shit all day. I just say stupid shit. And they're like, uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> they're probably like, please make her stop. So yeah, it was it's just it was really fun and nice. We had we had a really good night. A really good night. And even my hiking friends. So on Sunday I went hiking to a different trail and I ran into um three of my hiking friends. Tom and Matt and Yvonne, and they all took the time out of their running to talk to me and to hug me and to, you know, be genuinely concerned for my well being. And that's so nice. You think people are, but again, there's people that aren't. There's people that are just ridiculous, actually, <laughs> ridiculous people. Um, and Keithy's friends are the best, they're very, very lovely. Um, Keith would probably kick me in the butt if he'd be like, stop texting my friends. Oh, he'd be so mad. But it's so fun because I learn a piece of my Keith every day because, you know, I'm a mom, so they're not going to be. And I was a disciplinarian mom. Like, I don't want a lot of shit to slide by. So a lot of my raising of Keith was like, you know, are you doing this and that? You need to tell me this and that. <laughs> oh, I've tried to communicate with Keith. Yeah, it's kind of, <laughs> it's kind of hard. Um, it's kind of hard because it's probably me. I, I, I can see his hands. He shows me his hands on the motorbike. He comes through Deanna for me and Deanna, oh, Deanna and I spent the greatest day. We went downtown Hollywood running some errands of which it's a ghost town. And we saw Barry, and that's a friend of ours, and we saw him, and then we went and had lunch together, and so that was good, lunch, dinner, whatever, and she basically was talking, oh my God, she was talking to all kinds of people, but Keithy and Jimmy and um, my mom and all kinds of people just talking, and so it was really interesting. She gives me peace doing that for me. So I'm very lucky that I have somebody that, you know, can like do that, um, you know, for me because, yeah. So Keith comes through her. Yeah, I can't feel him. She's like, can't you feel your relatives in the room? And I'm like, no, <laughs> I can't. 
I can't feel them. I'm like completely blocked. I can feel, I mean, I, I got for somebody else. Thank you so much for that. You guys are so generous. Thank you. That will come in handy because um, I wasn't taking new clients and I had to push people off and all that kind of stuff because I couldn't function. But she can really feel Keith and she, she talks and what she says. Yeah, Jimmy and Slim crossed over Keith. It was really interesting because I never told Deanna about, um, I never felt my mom when she passed either. Uh, my dad, I felt, not my adopted mom, my adopted dad passed. I felt him all the way along. But I didn't feel my birth mom when she passed and I never did feel her energy and I still haven't felt her energy. So, you know, whatever. Um, but I was mad at her, not mad, mad, but I mean, you know, I was adopted. So I had that issue, even though I understand the issue <laughs> doesn't mean I'm not human. I'm human. We're human. Just because we're spiritual doesn't mean we cross over and we suddenly grow wings and we're like, oh my God, God, this like that. That's how, you know, a psychic's fake when they say shit like that, when they say shit like that, they are fake. Okay. Um, anyway, what was so interesting is Deanna knew nothing about my husband's father, so my father-in-law, I never said a word about him. His name was Slim. His name was also James, but it was, it was um, Slim. We called him Slim. My adopted father was called Slim, but they were called Slim for different reasons. My dad was chubbier, skinny when he's younger, chubbier, and John's dad was skinny like Keithy and like the rest of them, right? So... That day, and we have always said, cousin, you know, my cousin, the Cabela cousins in Canada, when Keithy was first born, we took him out there and they, they called him Little Slim, all right? This is something when they were younger because he was so much like John's dad. He had John's dad's hands and John's dad's feet and his attitude as he grew into it. Obviously, he's a six-month-old. We didn't really know his attitude and he had a set of lungs. He could scream, that's for sure. Um, and he's super smart. Like, John's dad was super freaking smart. Um... John's really smart too. Jason's really smart. I'm really smart, but not like that. Keithy was a different kind of smart, right? Um, but anyway, Slim, he died, I think in 2005 or four or three, something like that. Maybe 2003. Anyway, he was like 90. And when he died, John was up at the funeral and it was the day of the funeral. And I saw him walk through, um, we have a fireplace. So I saw him walk through the fireplace and walk through the living room, but he had his walker, like he had his walker. And I thought to myself, well, it's his funeral. Where the hell is he? But it was like, I was seeing through a dimension. Then he walked through another wall and off he went. And so that morning before I saw Deanna, John and I were talking and I said, Keithy was so much like slim. Like it just hit me. And John says, yeah, he was a lot like my dad, his hands, his feet, the way that he talked, kind of the way that he dressed even a lot of things about his personality from what I remember. But again, I knew my father-in-law when he was older, not when he was younger. I don't even know what he was like as a young man. So Deanna starts channeling Keith and she's like, oh, because when a soul crosses over right, like right after, um, sometimes they have a hard time communicating with us because they don't even know what they're doing. Like, remember when you're in any kind of violent accident, tragedy, plane crash, whatever, just before the point of impact, you're taken out of the body. The only time um, an accident hurts is when you remain in the physical body. So if you're going to get in a car accident and you're going to be, you know, alive and you have to come back. I had a friend that had a car accident, pretty much broke every bone in his body, three near-death experiences, 60 surgeries, that's a life of pain, okay? Like a huge life of pain. It wasn't his time. But when you have something like Keith and they're going to make a choice to cross out, they're not going to feel the impact. They won't remember it. They're removed just before. Do you remember that movie, Heaven Can Wait? And they removed Warren Beatty before he was actually dead. And then he wasn't supposed to die. And so they had to find him another body. So he was a walk-in technically. Um that's that's what happened before the body of the other football player died Warren Beatty stepped in and that football player's soul died but Warren Beatty took over the next half that can happen as well but anyway I knew Keithy left right away but the point was I was over at Deanna's and she was like to me do you know your your father and I'm like no I don't she knows I'm adopted but she, I know my birth mom so she figured I knew my birth dad I just never mentioned it and she goes, do you know your birth father? I'm like, no. And she goes, well, Keithy, it, this 
grandfather speaking for Keithy because sometimes they are spoken for from relatives on the other side till they acclimate in and they learn how to do things. So she said to me, well, this grandfather crossed Keithy over and she said, now she has no idea who Slim is or anything like this. She said to me, um, she goes, oh my God, this is his favorite grandson. Okay, that would be true because Jimmy was one. I don't know how Jimmy feels about that. <laughs> Keithy was one. And she said, this one, this is what he's telling her. This one is just like me. He's just like me. Well, that's funny because we walked, John and I walked out the door saying that about Keith was just like Slim. And so then I knew it was Slim. So that's what I said. I said, that's good. And I knew Jimmy was there. And then one of my other friends got the same message about Jimmy being there around Keith and speaking through her when she went to see another psychic for a different reason. So it was kind of interesting anyway. So he's around. It's just as his mother, maybe I feel him differently. I feel peace. Um, yeah, see, I know sometimes they don't. I mean, I don't, I don't know. Um, yeah, Jimmy and Slim crossed him over. That I do know. Thank you for that. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, Jimmy and Slim crossed him over. It's Jimmy and James. And actually, Marina also sent me, you know, my friend, um, Marina Anderson. Anyway, she sent, she asked her friend in England, her name, uh, the psychic's name is Jane Hamilton. I don't know if you guys know her. Maybe you guys do. Um, Jane and Craig Hamilton. Anyway, Jane reached out and immediately she said to me, who is, who is Jimmy and who is James? Okay, so Jimmy is Jimmy, but Jimmy was named, <laughs> I know you guys are like, who cares? But Jimmy was named James after John's dad, who is James Allen. And so, but he went by his nickname Slim. So she had them both over there too. So Marina, everybody's, yes, exactly. So everybody's really trying to help me because I feel really, really like just blocked, not blocked for other people, um, just blocked. So that's a shout out to Jane Hamilton for her graciousness in reaching out through Marina and then talking to me because of her friendship with my friend and doing that. That, that I mean, because there's no way, you would think Jimmy and James was the same person, but it's not, there are two different people and Jimmy was named after James. And then, okay, so Barb has told me, I have picked it up, Deanna has picked it up and Ken has told me and Lila told me a few years ago that she had a baby brother coming. So I was talking to Kenna the other night and I'm like, I'm like, I think there's a baby brother coming and Kenna says, listen to this, we're gonna name him James, but he's not in the belly yet, but they're gonna name him James. She said James, that's what she said. So I'm like, wow, that's really weird. Um, that's interesting. Yeah, I have the most beautiful friends that have been nothing, nothing but supportive to me. And the truth is, if you want to know the truth, Keith is teaching me. I, Keith is obviously my teacher because his birth was very difficult for me. Exactly. His, yeah, that's what I'm hoping. I'm hoping I get a glimpse of my Keithy. Um, Barb told me that when she, Barb dreamt it right after Keith died. Um, and she told me that the baby was coming to stop the sadness of the family, which was really nice. She said it. I mean, she literally just woke up and said she dreamt it or she saw it or dreamt it or whatever. And she said that, but, um, what I learned from Keith, and this is my true take on this from my son, both my sons have taught me, taught me a lot, but with Keith, his birth was a struggle and a fight. I mean, I had a home birth, um, but he ended up almost dying and John saved him. I told you that story before and he ended up in the hospital after the fact that I had a home birth. But Keith has taught me with his wisdom always. And, he, you know, as his mother, my arrogance was like, shut up and do what you're told. <laughs> I was that kind of mother. But in his death, he's really, really taught me so much because doing this work that I do and talking to the people that I talk to who have lost their children, lost their parents, lost people, brothers, sisters, boyfriends, husbands, whatever it is, babies, stillborn babies, miscarriage, whatever it is, 
those people come to me for some kind of relief. And really, quite frankly, if I'm going to do the work, then when I experience, I'm not to experience it in, I'm to experience it through the eyes of how I teach others to experience it because that's really my belief. So Keith has fortified my sense of faith in life from my being his mother and experiencing this. What a lesson that this child has taught his family in, in so many different ways. He has taught me that if I love you, I better tell you I love you. I better tell you I love you because you might leave that morning for school or work or to go to the gym or go pick your bike up or go pick your car up and you might not come home. He's also taught me that I had a relationship with him and that's what I'm supposed to look towards. And he's taught me that he's the adventurer that went forward into the next world before me. And so that's what he's taught me. He's taught me that he died. And if I'm to put my money where my mouth is, so to speak, right? And I'm to do that, then I really have to ground into my faith and be strong because it's what I say. So if you are not living by your own words, which I do anyway, when I say I don't drink, I don't drink. When I say I exercise, I exercise. When I say I eat what I eat, I live by my own, like my words. I don't, I don't live over here by these words and then behave over here by these words. So this has been my life. I believe the way that I think. So why would I not think my son is in God's hands in what, whatever God means? I don't think it's a white guy in a white robe. But whatever God means, why would I not think that now just because it's my son and my son is no different than other people's losses or other people's children or we all lose and it's not lose people transition into a different dimension before we are ready for them to do it and so we are not guaranteed in this world any kind of longevity just because we're a parent and just because you think you're a good parent or a bad parent or a this kind of parent or that kind of parent, it doesn't really matter. Each of us has a time and the time, okay, there, oh, I'm sorry about that, the suicide, that that's that would be very difficult to take for sure. Um, it's difficult to take anyway. I do feel that different manners of death could add like nuances of complete angst to, this, to losing a child. Um, it's something you don't want to do, but at the same time, the death itself has its own lyrical quality as you weave through it and what it does. It's, it's, um, it's interesting. It, there, I wake up, I call Keith's name every morning I wake up. The first thing out of my mouth is Keithy in the morning. I know he's not there, but I just call him to see if I can find him. Um, that's, that's what I call. I, I ask him to come through. So I, I look for Keithy. I say Keithy. I talk to Keithy. You know, I wake up. That is what I do. Um, and I'll always talk to him. I will do that. That's what I do. But to learn how, yeah, no, uh, wait, I have no idea. I haven't looked at it. Um, to learn how to live on this in this world without a child, I think is probably going to be very difficult. But at the same time, there's millions of people doing it. And if we don't, if we don't understand that there's children starving, I got to itch my back. See, my back's itchy. If we don't understand there's children starving, there's good children that die. There's hungry children that die. There's children in war countries that die. There's children that die in drowning, boating, um, all of these things. There was a friend of Jimmy's who's, who's, um, growing up, whose son drowned in the pool. The, the wife had asked the 17 year old kid, I guess, to watch the toddler and the toddler had gone out to the above ground pool, climbed up on the ladder while the 17 year old was watching TV or playing a video game. 
and fallen in head first and it was a matter of five minutes and the kid was dead and that was horrible and it happened sometime around Jimmy dying so that kid would be about 24 right now um yeah rascal pants is doing her rascally stuff um rascal is being a rascal she's playing with baby jack she loves baby jack she's playing with baby jack yeah there's there's um you know we're not guaranteed we're really not just because you have a child and you think you are a good parent and you think that you have money and you think you put them here and there does not guarantee that your child's going to live because your child has a soul path. And this is what I've learned. This is just what I've learned. Um, this honest to God is what I've learned. Um, you know, it's, it's just the way it is. And he obviously felt, um, oh yeah, she, Tulip's fine. She was doing her nails. We were, <laughs> Tulip was getting a pedicure from the vet. We clip her nails because she's going ballistic on the furniture. So that's what we do. Um, yeah, she didn't like that so much. But I learned a lot. I've learned a lot through Keith. Like I learned, it was weird because when I saw him on the ground, probably the worst possible thing that you could see. But yet I was looking for him. I could see his body, but I was looking for him. I have scratching pose for her. I just, I was looking, I was looking for Keith and I could see his feet, which is really weird. I could see his feet under, they'd already covered him with the blanket or the tarp, you know, the coroner's tent. And I could see his feet. I couldn't see his shoes. I was like, where the fuck are his shoes? And I was looking for his shoes. And then when I saw his face, it looked like Keithy. It really looked like little Keithy. Um, no, Keithy wasn't married, and he, it just hit off a sidewalk by a truck. Oh, God. Oh, I'm so sorry about your dad. See, and I bet you they drove off, too, these fucking people. Um, but I could see him there, and I just remember looking, and all I can remember is this, like, this... I was on the phone with Deanna right at that time, and I had my ear pods on. And I threw the phone down when I got there because I was driving up there and I knew he was dead. No one told me he was dead. I just knew because the, the blood drained out of my hands. But I was talking to Deanna. I threw, I didn't even turn the phone off. I just threw it in there. And I just remember going out and just screaming, like, just like, fuck, like, what the fuck is that? Like, what am I fucking seeing? Like, I, I was just like, what is that? Um, it was very, very strange. And then I thought for Keith, at that exact moment, and I could not see him around me, but I thought how weird that must be for him to have just popped out of his body. I got the impression it was just like this, pop out. And it was before he hit the ground. So I I was like looking around, but I'm not gonna see him like step up. But I was like, I wondered if he was in trauma from crossing out of his body or did he understand what happened? Because I don't know that we do understand right away. Um, he might have been in shock as well. He could have been in shock as well. But, and then I just remember I got back in my car because the cop told me you can't see him. Although some strange man, an Asian man who was there, who George told to get the fuck away from there, an Asian man with a big camera who did not work for the news and did not work for the police, apparently had free reign over taking pictures of my dead child on the street. But I, as the woman who pushed him out, had to wait to a fucking corner to come to give me the okay. And I still couldn't touch my son. I had to look at him. Um, so yeah, George needs a lot of prayers. George is um, so sensitive. George is very sensitive. And George is, um, you know, for George, that's very hard for him. So, you know, I, I hope George knows, like, there's nothing, there's, George did nothing. He came up on it. Yeah, he started out the driveway late from the bike shop, right? So he went out, he, he adjusted the seat because he was shorter than Keithy. So he pulled, I have to do it when I drove Keith's car. Like, it's like, Keith is like a low rider car and he's got his big long legs. In my car, he's, he can't even get in my car, really. <laughs> he has his big long legs crammed. He looks like, it looked crazy in my car. He had to sit sideways across the back seat because he was so tall, right? But um, George, approximately three minutes behind him and then didn't even see anything that happened, just saw 
like a traffic jam and tried to go around it and then saw the bike and then thought shit and then pulled in front and then saw Keith. So for George, it was um, very, he couldn't stop crying at first. He's better now, but George needs prayers. George needs prayers because he witnessed something that's probably very traumatic for him, obviously, and something that um, just, just, George said to me something really sweet that Keith was the best friend he ever had. Um, and I really love that. I love that because I know Keith really liked George a lot. Um, a lot. And George works with autistic kids and he helps them. So George is like a, I don't know if it's teacher's age. I might be saying it teacher's aid. I might be saying it different, but he helps the little autistic boys. There was this really cute little boy. His mother was a psycho. I mean, she was a couple of years ago, but it was our neighbor. <laughs> of course, it was our fucking neighbor. Anyway, one time I, this is when the kids were teenagers. I opened my window because they were out there fighting on the street, the mom. And I said, shut the fuck up. I'm sleeping like this. Like, seriously, she was drunk and she went running for my, like the cars. She's like three houses down. She went running to climb up on the car and try to get up in the bedroom window. And I was like, not going to happen, drunk ass. But anyway, she had the most adorable little baby, little baby boy, super cute. Kid was cute. His dad used to come and dress him all like very, very sweet, little, like perfectly like iron little jeans. He had very thick little glasses and he had something he wore on his head. I think he was autistic or born disabled. I don't know what. And he was like two and a half and he was the cutest boy. But George used to look after that. Yeah, Keith and George are friends. Um, George used to look after that little boy and other little boys in school. So that's what George did. He looked after, he looks after, he's a sweet person. He worked for the school and he helps them. So he's just a very nice boy and very sensitive. So he made a shirt with Keith, Keith's face on it and he wore it. He wears this little shirt with Keithy's face. Um, oh, happy birthday. Yeah. And so Jimmy overdosed. And yes, I predicted that. It was very clear for me when what was happening with Jimmy. That story is a whole different story. I'm droning on, but that story, um, I only plan to have one child. I knew I saw two children, but after having one, I was like, I don't think I'm equipped for this two children or more children thing. Um, so I had Jason and then three years or three and a half years later, Keithy came. But when I got pregnant, the day I got pregnant with Keithy, St. Patrick's Day, Okay, St. Patrick's Day, March 17th. That's the day I got pregnant. For some reason, I felt like having sex. John was down the street at the bicycle club drinking with his friends. He was with Terry the cop, Bob the truck driver, and Chris the construction worker. Bob and Terry are John's age, and Chris was a little bit older than me and married to a friend of mine. They were all down there drinking green beer. So I went and borrowed John for quick sex on the floor, the living room floor. True story. And anyway, I sent him back down to the bar to drink, right? And right after we had sex, it was a booty call. Well, I mean, a married booty call, but yeah. <laughs> it was Keithy, the babies make you have sex. This is it. Keithy was up there. He's like, this girl ain't going to get pregnant. I'm going to put a thought. She's going to go after my daddy and then come back. So anywhere, I, I literally, <laughs> John wasn't even out of the room, and I heard, ping, you're pregnant. Like someone tapped my head and I heard you're pregnant. I went, you just got me pregnant, right? <laughs> and he's like, I'm not even out of the room and I'm going back to drink. And I, I'm like, no, you just literally got me pregnant. And he's like, well, we'll know in a month or whatever. So, and the first pregnancy test came back negative, but I was pregnant. And then th within that first month, I got a series of messages. I heard one's coming in and one's leaving. So, I looked on this, John bought me this thing one time and it's a wheel that doctors use. So like if your period's in this time, you move the wheel and it says the birth will be at this time. So like, you know, within weeks, it's this little circle thing that I still have it. I don't know where it is, but I have it. Anyway, I looked and I saw Keithy would be born approximately December 16th. So I thought, well, that's weird because Jason was little, two and a half at the time or two and a bit, two and a half and a bit. And so I knew he wasn't going to pass. I didn't feel like it was him. So I knew it was going to be Jimmy, but I didn't know what would be wrong with Jimmy because there was nothing wrong with him. He was a good kid. You know, it was, it was, it's a pregnancy wheel that doctors use. It's immediately tells you if you, 
if your period's due here and it marks it out, you move it around, then you ovulate here, then you'll give birth here. Anyway, John bought it for me with Jason and I always kept it so I could find out when I was pregnant um, because I was paranoid after having Jason because it was fucking painful with Jason and his big fat head. Um, don't tell him I said that. He had a cone head when he came out. Anyway, Keithy, I, I heard one's coming and one's going. So I got very, very, very nervous. This is just not working again. I got very, very nervous about um, no heat, fan. Yes, fan. I got very nervous about Jimmy, but I didn't know why. So throughout the whole, and Jimmy looks, I mean, Jimmy that looks really good. Um, they were, Jimmy was John's son from his first marriage and he was a teenage father. So Jimmy is, yeah, anything that comes out of your vagina is like a watermelon coming out of a nostril. That's about it. It's like not meant for that. So all I can tell you men is if you don't know what it's like to give birth, put a watermelon inside your nose, let it grow to nine pounds and try to, you know, blow it out of your nose. It's about what it feels like. Um, <laughs> that's about it. Um, in my opinion. But anyway, Jimmy lived in our house for the first part of our marriage and Jimmy and I were he would be, I just turned 54, so in December, Jimmy would be turning 53. So we are the same peer group, but he was my husband's grown son. But he was my friend for seven years before he died, and he lived in our house. At the time that he died, he lived with his girlfriend, Cindy. But he ate dinner at our house and then brought his laundry home and shit like that. And so, anyway... I got nervous with Jimmy. So all, throughout the whole pregnancy, I had like psychic Tourette's, right? Psychic Tourette's, psychic Tourette's, psychic Tourette's. And I just expected him to drop dead throughout the pregnancy. I had no idea to the extreme of the overdosing that was going on until I think I was, well, there were a couple of times in the early pregnancy. So we were dealing with it and I would talk to Jimmy a lot. And probably, so then Keith was born and, you know, everything was fine. And I think when I was like eight months pregnant, eight and a half around Halloween. Yeah, because I had Keithy in December. So I was about eight months pregnant. There was an overdose at that time. And, you know, there were family members that were taking him out. Like I called the family members, including his mother, and told her, I think your son's going to pass. You can come to the house. I'm going out tonight. Of course, they would come to the house and they'd smoke pot with him and they'd drink with him. This, you know, this family was doing this shit at the time. With him, I guess maybe not thinking anything I said was fucking relevant, but I remember saying it and I was, I had little Jason and I went belly out to here. Um, you know, or they'd take him out and, you know, his sister and shit, take him out and, you know, whatever. I, I don't think they were taking it seriously at the time. It was a fucking nightmare while I was pregnant, truthfully. That whole pregnancy was extremely, um, extremely fucking intense for me, right? So just in the fact that I was paranoid that he was going to pass, right? So anyway, I gave birth to Keithy and then his birth was traumatic, okay? So the birth was very traumatic. And then it was good. Jimmy helped. I told you, Jimmy was really good with me. After I had Keithy, he would take care of Jason, watch Keithy, um, cook for me so I could lose the 97 pounds I gained or whatever the hell it was. So he'd grill a chicken for me at night and he was very sweet. Jimmy was a nice kid. He wasn't a bitch. He wasn't, and there's bitches in the family, but he wasn't a bitch. There was nothing that he did that I didn't like. And he talked to me and I really liked the kid. Okay. Like really, um, he made a point of buying me Christmas gifts like what I specifically the effort to do it. He was a nice, he was like Keith. He was a nice person. So after I gave birth to Keith, I kind of thought nothing was going to happen. So I remember Johnny turning 51. Keith would have been about three months old. And I remember Johnny turning 51. I planned a surprise party at the bar in the restaurant. So I planned a surprise party and Jimmy had overdosed two days prior to that. And so I, John sent me to the hospital to pick him up. And I remember going to the hospital. I had three month old Keithy, roughly he was three months in my, I, you know, under my arm. 
baby Jason, and then I got Jimmy out of the hospital. And we all went downstairs, took him back to the house, dressed him for the party. That night we were going to the party. He doesn't look well in those pictures. And I just remember looking at him going, I don't know when this is gonna happen, but I can feel it. And so it was weird because uh, the week that he died, I had a conversation with him about how he wanted me to bury him because I was so mad at him. I mean, there was nothing he was doing. He was nice, there was nothing he was fucking doing overtly in front of me that I thought was a problem. I detoxed him in the house. I held him hostage for, he's exactly 11 months younger than me. He was my stepson technically, but I didn't raise him. Um, and he was in the first seven, I guess he died, yeah, the first seven years of my marriage. Um, but anyway, he, we were there and he, um, I remember talking to him, we had lunch. And then it was a week later he passed. And so he's the oldest brother. Jimmy's the oldest brother. Um, there's Jimmy and then Jason and then Keithy. And there's another sibling above above um, Jimmy. Um, anyway, he that morning he woke up. Keith took his first steps the night, the, the day that Jimmy died. But we didn't get called till the next morning or in the middle of the night. But he took his first steps. And so it was really like weird. You know, he died and took his first steps. It was like that. Um, and I remember my last conversation with him was calling him probably that night because I was, I used to take Keithy and Jason, take Jimmy, my friend, because I worked at that shelter I was talking about before. She got me into a drug rehab for him, not a, a, where you go and you talk to them. So I would drive Jimmy down to the drug rehab place and he would go in and talk to whoever he talked to in there and I would be out in the car and I would be breastfeeding <laughs> Keithy and with Jason and then Jimmy would come out and we'd all drive home and that doctor phoned me and said, you can't bring him anymore. He has to come on his own. And I thought, fuck, if I don't bring him, he's not gonna go. So he did, there was about a, a couple of weeks before he died anyway. I called him on the morning, he, the day that he died. Well, I think he died later that night, but they didn't find him till the next day. Um, but anyway, I called him and I said, listen, you fucking asshole, you got to go to the doctor. And I was screaming at him and he was laughing at me with his usual charm that he laughed at me like that. And the next day he was dead. So Keithy was 10 months old. And there was that on Keith's whole childhood. So I had postpartum, Jimmy died. I was a complete basket case. I was not a good parent. I was unable to be a good parent. At that particular time, John was a better father. So I went through that, but I got Jimmy right away. I got Jimmy within a week of his passing and very strongly for the first year. And then his energy was shut down and then he went on, then I got him. And I had Jimmy in this house for like two months before Keith passed, but I've not got Keith the same way. It's just different, it's just different. But yeah, so I had that. So Keith's whole childhood, he kind of, in my opinion, just looking back on it, like Jason, I was all over Jason, like, you know, like, like this. With Keith, I was like, Pfft. Like that, like I just, I couldn't function. Like I really couldn't. Jason was a good parent to Keith, even though he wasn't his parent, because I had so many panic attacks, so much anxiety, postpartum, mental problems, all of it at once. So a lot of Keith's life was in the midst of complete chaos, if you ask me. People don't want to say that in my family, but it was chaos um, to me, for Keith. So for him to turn out to be such a good person, which had nothing to do with either one of his parents, by the way, people thanked us. And I was like, who the fuck are they thanking? Because that's so none of us. It was Keith on his own. You are born to be what you are. And your parents maybe are some kind of a guide, but it has nothing to do with us. Our children are good human beings or bad human beings or funny human beings because they are who they are on a soul level. And he was who he was. He came into our family to help heal us, I think. He was who he was, just just that's who he was. Had nothing to do with me or his father. Trust me when I tell you that. Not one damn thing. Now, his good looks had to do with a combination. 
the soul, the body that came in had to do with how he looked, but his temperament and personality, that was all him. He struggled and fought his way through that childhood, which was quite traumatic for him. I'm pretty sure very traumatic for him and very hard for him to, um, you know, whatever it, it was hard for him and hard for Jason. I think it would be for hard for Jason too, because Jason had a happy three years, three and a half years. And then suddenly he, Jason knew happy parents. Keith did not. Keith knew fighting and, and chaos and struggle moments of happiness, but Keith knew a lot more Pluto in the four, fourth house. If you know Pluto in the fourth house, Keith knew Pluto in the fourth house. Jason had, you know, sun and Venus in the fourth house, totally different childhood. Um, so yeah, no, Jason's got a hard crusty shell. Jason's a good boy, different than Keith, just different. Just, uh, it's just different. You know, people are different. We're all different, right? So, um, Jason's odd. <laughs> I was called odd too growing up. Jason is odd. Yeah, Keithy had, Keithy had Pluto in the fourth. Mm -hmm. Keithy had Pluto in the fourth and he was in Sagittarius, but he was in a Scorpio house. So, and he had moon in Scorpio. So he lived that kind of life. Jason is a cancer with an Aries rising and a Capricorn moon. It's different. And Jason has good aspects. Jason's very close to his father. Um, yeah, Jason's a cancer. Jason was daddy's little boy for those first three years. So, and baby Jack is now our baby Jack. Baby Jack's gone wild, but he's getting better. He's getting good. Um, anyway, no, Jimmy drug overdosed. That's what happened. Um, you know, personally, if I were to think about Jimmy, I would say there were instigators in the family. There's instigators in families. There's people that are corrupt in your own families and they can be, they can be parents. They can be grandparents. They can be siblings. They can be neighbors, but Jimmy was very empathic. And so when you are now, Jimmy was good looking six, four, very good looking kid. You don't think that people around him were going to be jealous as shit. And he was nice. Definitely going to be jealous as shit. Maybe even in a family, you got like a boy that looks good and a girl that doesn't, and you don't think they're going to be jealous. You got shit like this going on all the time. That shit happens. Jimmy was good looking. So people were out to get him. Keith was happy, outgoing, believed in God, tried to help people. There's people that are going to try to fuck him up, right? These people that give you drugs the first time, these people that put you into businesses and they get you to, um, do deals for work. Oh, here, I'll set you up on a date. Just fuck this guy and you can do this and you'll get a job in the studios. Shit like that goes on all the time. I have clients that talk about it. When you do that to somebody's soul, knowing it's not in their best interest, when you do that, you are corrupt. Whether you're a friend, a relative, a parent, you're a corrupt person. When you corrupt somebody, when you corrupt them, then they need to handle it on their own. And so you are part of the reason for them doing it. And it's corrupt, okay? Corrupt as shit. So Jimmy, I feel, in so many ways, was very, um, just very kind and very nice. And so he was going to be the target. Keithy was the same way, but in a different way. Keithy didn't do drugs. I'm not saying he never did them. I'm just saying it wasn't his thing. Um, but people are going to corrupt you. You know, if you're easily seduced, drugs, alcohol, money, I need this, I need that. If you're easily seduced, you can be corrupted and there's people in your own damn family that will corrupt you. And so you always have to watch who you are around, even if they have the word family on them or relative on them. You need to really fucking watch. Um, I kept a strong eye on Keith. Jason visited more of these people I'm talking about in his life. Keith, not so much because when Keith came, I was like, you know, I'm going to definitely, definitely, I'm not even going to try to be a family member with this because I just don't like the way you are as a person. You're corrupt. Your soul is corrupt and I don't like it. And I'm not even talking in a judgment sense, just by your actions. Always watch people's actions and don't assume 
no matter who they are, whether it be me, them, they're famous, they have a daycare, they, they're they kind, it's a guru, it's the Dalai Lama, I don't care who it is. Don't assume, watch their actions, watch what they do, watch, you know, watch how they are, watch exactly how they express themselves because you will see, okay, you will see through their actions and the way that they speak and what they do for others, not what they tell you they do, okay? Not what they tell you they do, what they actually do. And I was having this interesting conversation last night with a friend of mine, and he said to me, anytime, and I've noticed this too, anytime somebody comes up and says something like, oh, I never get jealous, or oh God, I'm not racist, like out of the blue, not because you're in a conversation with them, but because they're just saying it, you better know for a fact that they do that. Do not listen to what people say. Listen and observe how they treat others, their actions, and what they do. And so what I learned from Keith's friends, what I learned from everybody, which I'm so grateful for because I can't get Keith back and no amount of crying is going to help. This is not going to fucking help. Being drunk and drugged is not going to help. It's not the way I choose to handle it. Um, it's not going to help. It doesn't help me. It's just going to destroy me. Um, so no, or I'll get arrested or I'll kill somebody if I'm out drinking and driving. And it's a cop out, really. You have to deal with the things in your life as they hit you because you have no control. So once I know I have no control over it and it's nothing I can do about it, then I don't have a problem with processing it because... It happened. This is life. I don't get to say my life's going to not have my child die. Who am I to say that? So this is my life. This is where I exist right now. And it's perfectly fine. I'm fine. Like, believe it or not, I'm fine. I'm not happy about it. I miss Keith. I hope I see him. I hope he comes to me soon. I hope whatever happens to unblock me. But I'm perfectly fine right now. I don't feel like I'm going to kill myself. I don't, you know, nothing like that. So you don't need to worry. But um, people, because people keep asking me, I handle it because there's nothing I can do about it. When this shit happens, there's nothing you can do. It's not like Keith had an extraordinary life. He really did. From what people tell me from his good and kind actions. I did not know of all these actions. People are telling me they're not making it up. They're not telling me stuff like, oh, he robbed a bank, but he got his life back in order. Oh, he overdosed, but now he's going to be healthy. They're telling me shit. People are telling me shit that he did that was so lovely um, and so, like, kind that that is, that's nice to know. I don't know how that happened, but that child did good and it came from his heart and his soul. So when I reflect back on it, even though I was his bossy, loud, aggressive mother, okay, aggressive as shit, mother who drove him crazy, crazy with his little silent Scorpio moon. Probably the reason for the Pluto in his fourth house is me coming at him, screaming at him. What the fuck are you people doing? Um, I'll just never forget Marvin and Keith. I told Marvin this on the weekend and Jason with his camera telling Marvin and Keith to climb up, up, up on somebody's like ladder and then Keith running back in the house going, Marvin fell off the roof. Marvin fell off the roof. Jason's filming it. Marvin fell off the roof. I was like, fuck, Marvin's mother's going to kill me. And I just remember Marvin was okay. <laughs> he didn't break his head. But I was like, oh my God, what the hell happens if like Marvin's dumped on his head? Jason didn't stop to video it. Keith's running. It's the funniest thing. They were all little. I don't think Jason could have been more than 11 or 12, possibly 13. And I was like fuck. And Marvin was three years younger. So, um, but what I learned from Keith is even though I knew Keith to be one way, which we had our mother son interaction. And even though people in the family tried to say, I didn't count in that relationship. Okay. So this was said to me after Keith, I'm, I know I'm digging, I'm digging at people, but this was said to me because I spent less time around my home in the six months prior to Keith's passing and more time working. I was made to feel guilty about that. But you know what? At 24, my son had his own life and that's what he was supposed to be doing. And this is what I was supposed to be doing. So, you know, it's really interesting. Um, 
No, I feel, I feel we are. I feel the world, I don't think die, like get run over by cars die, but I do feel like within 30 years, I don't think we're all going to be here. I think we'll all be, be wherever it is we exist at this point. I don't know how that's going to happen. No, I, I know. I don't feel guilt. It's just fucked up family members saying shitty things to me, getting into arguments in the middle of the night. That's what it is. Um, not even joking. <laughs> but I, I mentioned this out loud. I'm not keeping it secret. So I will not keep it secret. I may not say who it is, but I will say, no, they're always cruel. They're cruel. They're constantly cruel. And they think that their pain's the only pain that hurts. That's not the way I feel about it. I'm just noticing that what Keithy did and how he did it, I would just like to correct the person who ran him off the road, whether it be on purpose or by accident or because they were distracted or whatever it is. I would prefer to know who that is. That is what I would like. Now they're always cruel. They're 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 a bunch of bitches. Mm. They know who they are. They're probably the hecklers in this feed. <laughs> it's okay. They won't win. They won't win because I don't care what you say. I'm not going to defend myself. You didn't like what I did. I literally had 30 hours to plan. Um, once they released the body from the morgue, the crematorium called. <laughs> and told me you can um, you can cremate Keith Keithy on Thursday. This was on Tuesday night, so nothing was open. Um, so they called me, and then so Wednesday I had all day to make the flyers, get the crystals, and I'd like to do a shout out to Rachel who went and got me all of the beautiful crystals so that I could um, you know give the gifts to all the people that came to. Keithy's service and then I had to find a pastor so Libra Lori found me her lovely pastor pastor Bob and he was willing to do the service in the park and it was very free form and it was all about how Keith was a free spirit and a good person and I actually felt it was in the park that he worked out with they put like a workout not bench a workout contraption on one end of the park and Keithy worked out there every day and there was a homeless man that came up saw the picture of Keith and said that he talked to him all the time and the other people did they were just lovely people that came and Keith's friends were all there all my friends were there our cousins were there Aaron came in from Vegas cousin Aaron you know we had our support there you know, my friends, I just really lovely. And I felt a sense of peace with Keith there because it was with nature. It was where he liked to be. And he was spoken about as the kind person that he was. His goal in life was to elevate people. So when you are that kind of person, people that walk in a different level of energy or people that are perhaps doing drugs and drinking, they're not going to like you. They're not going to like you. People that don't have the same goals, people that don't have that, they're not going to like you. He was just in the process of learning how to, to, to be a certain way, but he was very empathic. That child was empathic. So with empathy and psychic ability comes codependence on people, the feeling, the need to take care of people, the need to be responsible for other people. He would have struggled with that. He would have struggled with that. That's, you know... Um, you're trying minus 26. They leave us. Yeah, they do. Oh, no, no, no. I know they leave us. Yeah, they leave us. Um, yeah, it is tough. It, it's tough. Um, yes, the cop was definitely biased against motorcycles. An interesting thing the cop said to me, though, the next day when I went there, and I was saying this before, I went there to tell him about the eyewitness that saw the truck, and the guy got out of the truck and said, I'm sorry I didn't see him. Um, Paige was his ex-girlfriend up until two years ago. She was the one that he met when he was 12. He had a new friend that he was seeing. And then there was a girl for a year in between that I just met, which he kept secret from me. And she told me this really great story. She said that one day I was driving out of the house as she was pulling up to pick up Keith. And I had just said to Keith, I know you got a dark haired girlfriend. And I think I'd said Armenian. And he said, nah, nah. And I asked him, why won't you tell me who your girlfriend is? And he said, because I don't want you to be friends with them. Because I was friends with, with Paigey. Um, yeah, John is psychic. John has psychic um, ability. 
But uh, the cop said, the day after I went back and I said, the eyewitness told me there was a vehicle that stopped and the vehicle, the guy got out and said, I'm sorry, I didn't see Keith. And I re reiterated what um, the girl told me doing, doing the chest compressions. The cop said to me, yeah, they never told me that. They told the other two cops that were there that it's already in the report. It's an investigation. My question is to you, then why the fuck 40 minutes after my child dies, do you go to tell me a cockamamie story about what he's doing and what this is and what this, is, what this isn't? Because you don't know because you're, I don't understand what the miscommunication was. But then he looked at me and he said, this is a spiritual war. And I was like, wow. Okay, so either something stepped into you or you're telling me something and trying to threaten me or trying to make me feel uncomfortable by saying that, but it doesn't matter. I don't care. You're not going to stop me. Nothing you're going to do is going to stop me. You can sit there because remember, this is another thing I wanted to say. Regardless of what I do and say here or who I out or who I, he did say that to me. He literally said, this is a spiritual war. Um, and so I was like, and I was talking to Arlene, so she knows I hung up and called right back and said, this fucker just said this, but regardless, okay, remember Satan, what you want to call Lucifer, it is a fucking spiritual war. God wins. Oh, I'll report after because he totally lied about everything. Um, he took the advice of the one person who's, I can't even, but he took the eyewitness report of an eyewitness who didn't witness, okay? So it's like, I, I talked to that guy. Anyway, Satan, Lucifer, people that do the dark, the bizarre, um, black magic, and I mean shitty ass magic. Yes, the cop said that, looked right at me, cop sounds possessed. Oh, and then, yeah, after I call back the next day, he goes, you don't know how fast your son was going. I'm like, I just had the bike examined by a professional and I do know how fast he was going. Well, you don't understand. Yes, I do. Then the cop said to me, you should probably, you know, I'm worried you're not grieving. I said, oh, I'm grieving. I'm doing what I want. And why is it a fucking cop, a man who continually told me about shit in his own life about how he had to flatline twice. Okay, that's really great that you did, but you're living and my son is dead, so I don't really care because you lived. So I'd hear your story after we discuss my son is fine. But my point is, regardless of how inappropriate that is at that moment, he did say it was a spiritual war and he did tell me how I should be grieving. And I said, first of all, I don't need you to fucking tell me. Don't, and I said it nicely. But here's the thing. If I'm not grieving the way that people think I should be grieving, I'm not going to fall apart. You've got the wrong person here. I did that when I had Keith. I had a nervous breakdown. It's not happening again. You can't do anything to me at this point. <laughs> you can't fucking do anything to me anymore. You can't. It already just happened and I can't do shit about it. Um, yeah, there, there was something with him. Yeah, there was something that he said, but he did say that to me. And I was like, you are either making me think that I'm being targeted or that Keith was targeted. Remember, just because somebody says that they're responsible for something or that it's demonic or that it's this or that it's that. Satan always lies. It's the biggest fucking lie, Luciferianism of all. Remember, fallen angel, they lie. Even when people say your soul is sold out, those people may believe it, but if you ask for God's help, you will go back into God's presence. The existence of Satan's is the absence of God. So they, he's always lying. He's trying to catch the soul on the way out. It's not going to work. God comes for his own. So if you ask for redemption in that set, and no, whoever's calling me televangelist, fuck you, I'm not a televangelist. I'm just telling you between the light and the dark. When you're a psychic, you work between the fucking light and dark, okay? That's what happens. Um, I've been called everything. Some of this shit is funny. Thank you so much for that. Some of this shit is funny that people call me because they think I'm, you know, I must be a religious nut. I'm not any, I don't go to church. I didn't do church as a child. It's not what I'm talking about. I'm literally talking right now that, yeah, you cannot sell your soul because you don't own your soul. 
God does. However, you can be tricked into giving up your rights and performing, now pay attention, performing acts of, of immoral behavior on the soul that wear on the soul. And then you're less apt to go into, no, he was a real cop at the station, but he, uh, yeah, you know, he was real, but yeah, they've got, remember, they've got their people placed everywhere. So maybe somebody stepped into this cop and just did, said it and he was unaware of it. But I took note of what he said. He said it straight to my fucking face, um, which is not a bad thing. If I were talking to you guys or my friends, they know I say that. But for a cop to randomly come out after my son ends up dead on the street, I'm like, that's interesting. But nonetheless, nonetheless, when people think that this is like some kind of biblical religious talk, I'm not talking from that perspective because I have never read the Bible. I know what's going on, okay? I know what's going on. I've known it for years. I know what's going on, like from my perspective. So when I say to you, they lie, but if you follow the Luciferian doctrine, and I don't care what you do, you'll find out when you cross over. But when you follow it, understand a lot of it is based on lies. They have you doing the rituals. They have you following it. Then your corruption, understand fallen angel, the corruption of the experience of God. So you are corrupting the self with these actions. When you defile your body, you corrupt, you corrupt. When you, yeah, so intrusive. Yeah, I, I know. These fucking people, I, I, I'm so sick of being called names. Here's what I am. I'm a Canadian ex-stripper psychic who just lost a child, has a big fucking mouth, speaks what's on her mind, doesn't care if you get a reading, don't get a reading, fucking tune in, don't fucking tune in. I don't care. But I'm going to say what I'm going to say, period, because this is my path. I was told to do it. Also, which brings me to another point. There's been several people who I'm sure are well-intentioned, but extremely over the boundary, have been running background checks on me. All right, that's interesting. Thank you for that. Who runs fucking background checks on anybody? <laughs> I'm not dating you. So they've been running um, background checks on me. They're telling me about shit. I'm reading the background checks. I don't know if these services get the information right or wrong, but it's not, it's not right. It's not fucking right. You know, um, it's not right. Like the information is crazy. They're mixing up people's names. I don't even know who they're mixing up. Um, it's very fucking weird. So, uh, yeah. Anyway, I feel directed to do what I'm doing in reference to Keith. Yeah, I know. But, well, people were getting me background checked because they thought that, Keith was erased from my background. I'm like, well, he was 24. He doesn't have anything in his name, really, but a motorcycle. So I don't know where he shows up or not shows up. Yeah, it was very weird. I know, running and then sent it to me. Several people. I was like, wow, okay, if you want to run a background, I mean, I'll tell. I, I don't think I fucking hide anything here. So, you know whatever. I am an open book because if I open it up, you can't control me with it. That's my point. Exactly. I was like, wow, so weird, right? Anyway, um, so the, no, the background checks are inaccurate. Like it had a bunch of people that were not in my family, like for real, not in my family. I'm like, I don't know who these people are. They may have the, my last name, but I don't know who they are. And then other people were missing. I was like, just yeah, it was a little bit intrusive, but people are going to be intrusive. And I guess that's, you know, you can be what you want to be. I don't hide. I'm not hiding anything. Like, there's nothing I'm hiding. <laughs> that's not what I'm doing. You want to ask me, Keith was my kid. And they can't erase the existence of Keith, even if he's not in your little background check. What it is, little Keithy is here. And I am a pixie. Oh, my God. What about this where you have to answer your your your... Oh, now I forget it. What you want to be called? Like, do you want to be called a him or her or whatever? Hear me clearly. I'm a fucking pixie, okay? I'm a little pixie. Don't call me a girl. Don't call me a boy. I'm a pixie or a giraffe. I'm a fucking pixie giraffe, idiots. 
Our whole world is so stupid. Yeah, I know. Um, pronouns. Thank you. I'm like, whatever. Um, anyway, Keithy, <coughs> no matter what anyone tries to erase or not erase, I knew him for 24 years and he was my son and therefore i had a relationship with him so there's we are not guaranteed and he made a, a just a remarkable mark on everybody that he came across which is lovely to hear after he passed it's so much better than saying he got shanked in jail i mean i've got nothing to complain about he's definitely my teacher because now i have to go through my life without him and deal with the other people and deal with it in a different way, in a way that's actually more truthful to myself. So that's what I'm going to do. And I will not ever allow arguing around me again. It will not happen. So if anybody is going to talk behind my back, they're gonna be cut out. If they're going to use an agenda to talk to Keith's friends or you know communicate with them, um, even though they weren't in Keith's life, they're cut out. If they're going to um, tell me I'm a piece of shit because they don't like the service I planned and they didn't like what happened or they didn't like the party I had, they too are going to be cut out. <laughs> That's going to happen. Um, and when they don't understand why I'm not talking to them, that's going to be the reason. And if you don't like me because I don't do drugs and I don't want my kids smoking pot taking pills or drinking, that's your fucking problem. Um, if you don't like it that I pray, that's also your fucking problem. If you don't like the work I do, think I'm full of shit. There was a woman that phoned me for a reading and she just started to like say, oh, you're too generic or too something. I hadn't even really started the reading. It was under like 10 minutes. I was like, bye, I'm sending your money back. Bye bye. You know why? I don't want to fucking talk to you when you talk to me like that. Don't do that. I'm not doing it. Only, only will I take peaceful happiness around me. That is all I'm doing. And I don't care. That's what I'm saying. That's it. I know. I just gave her her money back. It's like, whatever. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> I don't know what to say. Like, I'm not in the mood for it. I'm trying to get the information and I'm doing the best I can. And if I don't get it, no psychic's perfect. No psychic makes sense all the time. No psychic even fucking jumps through hoops like you see on TV. None of that shit happens. But what I will tell you, what I will tell you is um, the person that Keithy would have become would have been amazing. Um, Lila's doing good. She's playing with Baby Jack. She's doing online school. Lila's doing online school, um, so that's kind of fun uh, for her, not for Kenna, but uh, thank you guys. Lila's doing so much, so much fun, and so much, um, she's doing her work, and she's trying her best, and Mommy Kenna's being good, Baby Jack's being a rascal, he's been staying over at the other house where there's more land for him to run around like a wild, a wild little Baby Jack. He's got Zuli, he's got Buddha, and he's got... Um, OG and he runs all around the goats live next door it's really cute and he's been very cute so that's what's happening with him Tulip she went to the nail salon I mean the vet to get her nails clipped and I got to get her a new brush I couldn't find her brush suddenly her brush disappeared probably somebody thinks it's a hairbrush and it's cat brush so they're brushing their hair with a cat brush just saying um, yeah, I know mommy Kenna's doing, I know I call mommy, mommy Kenna. She's not my mommy. She's cute Kenna. Thank you so much for that. Yeah. Kenna's cute Kenna. Um, no, I don't think Keith is going to come back. He left for a reason. I don't think he's going to come back. I don't know why I want to say that, but I just don't think he's going to come back soon. Not, not the way I think. I may see bits and pieces of Keith through different people and different experiences, but I really love that boy. And so, you know, he had a little, he had an, a little bit, he had a good, he had a good brother and a good father and a good mother, but we'd all been through a trauma at the time, you know, just after his birth. So it was a little bit difficult for him. My little doodleberry. So cute. Hated it when I called him do. <laughs> Hated it. Hated it. And again, I'm shouting out to his friends, Allie, who's the girlfriend of Andrew, 
who reached out right away and was so lovely. She stuck her little phone number in my hand, which would make Keith go, fuck, stop talking to my mother. Um, and then there's Tia, Andrew's sister. And then there's Jordan and there's Lucas and there's Austin and there's Saul and there's, oh, I would say little Michael. He's big Michael now, okay? I knew him as a kid, so that was his name, but it's not his name anymore. Um, there were all of Keith's friends. There's Clay. There was Jason. There was Tanner. There was Ian. I mean, there was all the kids. Mary Ann. I was so happy to see Mary and Ann and um, John and Andrew. These were the, the kids that lived down the street in our complex. And my boys were always at their house. Their mother was there and she was really lovely. Like when I would fight with them when they were teenagers, they would run down there for dinner and they would be calm. Like I always felt safe when they were down there. I mean, I probably shouldn't have. They were probably doing something. But the mom would cook for them all the time. So they had like an open house cooking, Filipino house, you know, cooking their rice, cooking all of that. So Jason and Keith were always down there. And I, I you know, when I was have, struggling with them as teenagers, um, they were always really well taken care of down there. So that was so good. Um, I was so happy to see them. Just everybody. I met people I didn't know. George, just absolutely. Um, George checked on me, called me, came out and put signs. Marvin, who I literally, and Jade, his girlfriend, and all, you know, all of them. Maddie, who's so cute. She kept talking to me. She's a little triple cancer. I never forget that. I have to tell her what that means. Um, yeah. Um, so everybody was just so lovely. The friends, so lovely. I mean, seriously, doing that whole Austin, all of them, all of them. So if I haven't mentioned anyone's name, but I apologize. All the girls um, in the house, everybody, just everybody. So lovely and so gracious actually to us, include us. Because some people are not like that. It's not... It's not like that. Keith's energy was really, really um, inclusive of everybody. So that would be his message is inclusivity. Um, although, you know, at times he would get mad at me for being a weirdo with him. <laughs> He'd go, you're a weirdo. I took the last video of him and he was moving the couch. So I was getting him from behind. He turned around. He saw me. He goes, you're a weirdo. And I was like, no, you know, um, yeah, I know, right? The homeschooling. But it, it, it's been a lovely experience as far as what I've heard from people and the kindness towards Keith. Really quite extraordinary. And I'm really glad that he was that kind of a person. I didn't know that necessarily. You know, I didn't know it. I mean, I knew he was a good kid and he's my kid, but this, is, this had nothing to do with me. So he was a little fireball that landed on the earth and then he went back home. That's all. That's all. I will miss him. Oh God, I'll miss, I will miss my Keithy. Yeah, I'll miss that kid. That kid whistling and cooking in the house. And then I went home one time and there was a hole going up the stairs in the ceiling. And I was like, trying to figure out what, like, there's nothing there. It's just like when you start going up the stairs, the ceiling. <laughs> I was like, what is that? And <laughs> John's like, oh, Keith. Keith, you know, his snowboard or his ski pole or something, I don't know, it went through the roof. So I had my friend patch it up because none of us could get up there to patch it up. But it was just funny. It's just funny. And Tulip loved Keith. So anyway, I am going to go back to doing normal videos. Oh, an update. The guy that took the video on CA Motorcycles Down, I was contacting the father. I got a hold of the son who has the same name. But he sent me the video so we could try to blow it up. It's really just taken off an iPhone and probably not the best video. But um, I got his number. And he is a 28-year-old young man who also rides a, mitre, rides a motorcycle. Says there's a lot of accidents around there. Um, I asked him to stop riding his motorcycle because he has a baby, a girlfriend, a mom, and a dad. I said, you don't want to You don't want to do that and he didn't see anything else leading up to it he just happened to see you know the bike and then when he said he turned the camera off when he saw Keithy on the ground because he thought it was more serious so he turned it off 
but he was, um, so we spoke, his name is Louis. So I have found Louis. I am now looking for who I thought was the Asian photographer. I thought the guy looked Asian. I saw a picture of him on somebody's film and I can't reach that person who I think showed it to me. They haven't contacted me yet. One of the kids, oh gosh, sorry. <laughs> like I'm just like, oh gosh, sorry, exhausted. Anyway, um, I'm looking for that guy. And when I find him, I'm just going to ask him if he can show me. I need to find that out. And that's what I need to find. And that's it. Um, you guys have been so lovely. Look, I'm yawning. It's like now I'm like ready to sleep. You guys have been so lovely and so kind and so open in so many ways and so gracious to reach out with kindness that I just don't even know what to say. So I thank you guys for that. I thank you for keeping track of me, the people that text me, the beautiful gifts I got. I got beautiful bracelets. I got a little cactus arrived in the mail. I think that came with the bracelet. I got birthday cards and gifts. I got beautiful crystals that hang in front of windows. I got, um, some of these are birthdays and some, they came for the birthdays. I got all kinds of beautiful things, like really lovely things, cards, condolence cards, happy cards. I got a little plaque um, that's in my room. I mean, really lovely things. I am so grateful. Um, I got a gold bracelet that's like a charm bracelet and then my blue bracelet from Australia, uh, a bag from Australia with birds on it. I mean, just all kinds of things, really lovely. So I am so grateful and I thank you guys because I mean, everybody, oh, I have a PO box listed somewhere down there or wherever. I'm so not good at writing this stuff. But you guys have been so great. And I want to tell you, we did find the, the guy, Louie, with the tape. And he was, it was his father and him have the same name. So it was the kid that had the tape. Anyway, they um, both reached out finally. And they did that. So I was really glad. And everybody was really lovely. And everybody that came, you know, just came to help, came to show up. Anybody that just said something kind or even just took a look at Keithy's pictures. I'm, that's lovely. I think we should be that way for everybody, whether they're on YouTube or not. So thank you guys for that. And thank you for all like the lovely gifts and things that you've sent, the super chats, just everything. And I know I haven't been on as much, but it's, um, there is a PO box. I'll have to write it. I'll have to write it under this. But you guys have been so lovely, just all of you. So I want, I, I thank you. I feel you. My whole family thanks you. Um, and thank you for that. So thank you, everybody. And somebody sent Lila a card. It's still here. She has not opened it yet. Um, she hasn't been, she has not been up here to open it. I've been down there with her. So thank you guys. And I will see you. I am getting back to normal soon. Um, everybody say your prayers and remember even if you think your kids are just in their bed and they're lovely and nothing's going to happen, that's not the way it works. So tell the people that you love seriously, and I know we hear this ad nauseum, but literally tell them that you love them. Because I wish I have said it that morning. I don't know whether I went upstairs to see if Keith was still asleep or John said he was working out. I just come back from the pharmacy. So just tell them and just show kindness. I've been showed kindness from people who don't even know really what's going on, who have just said something or just been kind. So maybe just be kind and that's it. So thank you guys so much. I love you all and I will see you within two days. I will be back um, with normal stuff. I will be back. And yeah, they do film fit. There's a website, exactly. Um, thank you guys so much. Mwah. I love you all. Mwah. Bye, you guys.